Welcome to the channel and welcome to this 3000 point match play game between Orcs and Iron Hands. This city is burning, the city has been brought to its knees by a rampaging orc horde and the last few survivors have gathered in the reliquy in the centre, the only building left standing and have lit some candles and are praying for deliverance. They're praying for a saviour and it appears as though the god emperor of mankind have heard their prayers because the Iron Tenth are here to drive the Xenos back. Today on the channel we'll be playing a 3000 point match play game. We're playing Retrieval, so there are four objectives on this battle grid and he who controls them at the end of the game wins. We're keeping it simple, otherwise my brain will melt. I'm going to be in charge of the Orcs. Um, we are not a clan, we are a wow. We are Murphy's Wah. Unfortunately Murphy isn't with us today, but uh, Grugga Chugga is. Grugga Chugga is in command of this um, Orc horde. And my opponent today is Paul. Say hi, Paul. Hello. And you're commanding the Iron Hands. And every time you've come down, you've brought a different army down. How many armies do you have? Last count, 29. Yeah. Tw you, uh, but it, tw 11 what? of them are unplayable. They haven't been assembled or painted yet. So, excuse me, you have 29 armies. Yeah. You are an Orc God. Possibly Cork or Mork. You're a 40k God. I've only got one Orc army. Okay, so you're a 40k god then. You Are you the emperor? Um, I think he's thinner. <laughs> <laughs> so 3,000 points worth of um, orcs versus iron hands. Um, the iron hands are deployed on this side. We're doing Dawn of War. I'm going to be deployed on that side. And like I said, three, three points for each objective you control at the end of the game. First blood, not first strike, and slay the warlord line breaker. Um, this battle mat is brought to you by urbanmats.com and this glorious modular terrain is brought to you by foregroundpublishing.co.uk. It is modular, you can set up how you like and yes it comes pre-painted, it comes in these colours, it's MDF, you just stick it together like this. If you're a member of the DZTV Discord then um, you get 15% 15, 15 off this stuff. Check the link in the Discord thing. If you want more Winter's SEO battle reports, then I encourage you to join us in the Deployment Zone at www.deploymentzone.tv or you can join us as a patron. If you want to get in the Discord, then um, patron support is the way to go. That unlocks the Discord for you and then you can get the discount, the money off this sort of thing here. So more Winter's SEO battle reports on DZTV. If you go to the Patreon, by the way, it's um, just search for DZTV, not deploymentzone.tv, just DZTV. Um, and that helps support us, helps us make more battle reports, things like that. For everyone who's already in there, thank you very much. Very much. Um, I have to do all these things. I keep getting told off by Liam. I think it's deployment zone is what you have to type into Patreon rather than... No, it is. In, 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 in Patreon, it is DZTV. It is. Okay. okay. It is. It but on the... Wasn't it? <laughs> I think it was. But on the internet, on the, for the more battle reports, it's deploymentzone.tv. Yeah, I have to do all these things, otherwise Liam tells me off. Liam also keeps reminding me that I am on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that as well, so you can follow me and... And stuff so foreground publishing for that urban mats for that.com deploymentzone.tv for more stuff or dztv in patron that's it for the greedy capitalist stuff that's going on 3000 point match play game will the orcs will murphy's wow no you're right yeah you're right i'm right it's just so novel that you're right i thought i should check <laughs> uh 3000 points match play game um let's go and have a look at these armies Right, this is bang on 3,000 points worth of Orcs. It's a battalion, so that gives me 15 command points to play with. And I'm playing Death Skulls, Lucky Blue Gits. One single clan here. Now, I know the better way to play Orcs is to have a couple of different clans. So have some Snake Bites and have some Goths and have them do it that way. That's probably the better way to do it. But at 3,000 points, and um, yeah, it's hard for me to keep track of everything, <laughs> as you may have noticed in previous battle reports. So it's just simply easier for me. It's simple this way if everyone is in the same clan. So that's what I'm doing. 
because otherwise my brain will melt more than it normally does. And uh, Lucky Blue gets, I've got a six up and vulnerable save all the way across the field. This doesn't affect rots, by the way. And I can reroll one hit, one wound, one damage every time a unit is called upon to shoot or fight. Nice and simple, you see. Now, leading the charge, my Warlord is Grugger Chugger. And um, I've given him the Warlord trait might as right, so he's got an extra attack and extra strength. So he's up to strength 14 with his Power Claw and um, five attacks. And I've given him the Killer Claw Relic. So it's a flat three damage and I can re-roll all fail wounds. So he's a bit of a boss in combat and there's a Death Killer War Trike next to him and Weird Boy Will. Weird Boy Will is a warp head today because the green energy from all this green tide is surging through his veins and he's got War Path and Dad Jump. Basically, Weird Boys typically have one psychic power but if you spend that command point, you can give him two and he can cast two. And then there's a big mech with a custom shooter and a power claw and a custom force field for a five up and vulnerable save to all orc units wholly within 10 inches of him. There are my four HQs. Grugger Chugger is my warlord. He will be leading the charge and they've got a couple of people to keep them company in the backfield. There's a pain boy for that all important six up feel no pain. And there's a knob with wire banner. And basically any orc units within six inches of him get plus one to hit. Now orcs normally hit on threes. So orcs within six inches of that banner hit on twos, which is epic. Uh, Grugger Chugger already hits on twos because he's a boss and the killer claw is not unwieldy. But normal orcs smacking away on twos, I like that. So there's my lump. There's my castle of HQ billowing out orders. In the troop section, one big chunk of slugger ch chopper boys. There's 30 of them here. Uh, this uh, unit of slugger chopper boys, there's 17 because of points. And then I've got two units of 11 shooter boys. And wherever you see a power claw, he's the knob boss. So there's a, um, but except in the shooter boys, they've got big choppers, big choppers. Um, not power claws. Power claw there, power claw there, and a big unit of nobles. And so they have lots of attacks and I've got a mixture of weapons, all close combat weapons in here, like big choppers, kill swords, and there's a power claw. The boss knob, wherever you see a power claw, boss knob. And the reason why, uh, these are units of 10, so I can put them in a truck. These are units of 11, so I can put them in a truck, because trucks carry 12. So if I've got less than 12, then I can add some of my characters into that truck with those squads at the start if I want to. And then two big squads of knobs. These are knob war bikers, where you see the power claws. They're the boss knobs. Um, six mech guns. Four of them are tractor guns. Two of them are the custom mega cannons, I want to call them. They're the D6 shot strength eight guns. 15 looters. Lots and lots of looters. We like the DACA. We like firing in the general direction of the boys in black. Um, three squads of Gretchen, two squads of 11, one squad of 10 because of points, two shock drunk tractors, two custom booster blasters in the backfield. Basically, what I've got, these guys are actually DACA. I know they're quick, but they chuck out some DACA. So they're a DACA unit. The mech guns are a DACA unit and the looter boys are DACA unit. So I've got quite an amount of DACA for an orc army shooting out of the backfield. Everything else, like the boys and the HQs and the hordes, Everything else will be pushing forward. A genius of 40k, a god of 40k once told me that you put the shooty stuff at the back and the punchy stuff at the forward front. So that's what's happening today. One last capitalist shout out. This army, this gloriously painted army, was all painted up by Den of Imagination PaintingStudios.com. This is to a level three standard. So if you want an orc army painted like this, or if you want any army painted up to this, and bear in mind they got to level seven, so the fact that this is a level three paint, mind you, their level seven stuff is like golden demon standard winning. They've, they've got some winners there and it's hugely expensive level seven and they'll spend months doing one miniature. But this is level three stuff. So level three stuff by Den of Imagination. Thank you so much for putting this together for me. Um, I think that's it. Let's go and have a look at the Iron Tenth. This is 3000 points on the nose of Iron Hands. The Iron Tenth, it's a battalion. Two of the elite ones, one of the heavy ones, many command points to play with, and they are Space Marines. So they have the Angels of Death keywords, and they have the Devastator Tactical and Assault Doctrines. And you start with Devastator, then you can change the Tactical, then you can move to Assault. But Iron Hands, whilst the Devastator Doctrine is in effect, they can move and fire their heavy weapons without penalty, and they can re-roll hit rolls of one while the Devastator Doctrine is in effect. 
They also get Ignore Wounds on a 6-up. They fire Overwatch on a 5-up. And their vehicles that have a damage characteristic bracket thing, the vehicles that lose, you know, uh, if you've got a vehicle like a Predator that when it gets to a certain point it fires or hits a, a lower characteristic, well, you double that bracket of wounds to find out what it fires at, what it does, essentially. It won't affect the Dreadnoughts with 10 or wounds, less than 10 wounds, but it will affect the Redemptor, for example. So they're very good when the Devastator Doctrine is in effect, and that Overwatch on the 5 and the 6-up field, it's, and they've got Angels of Death, Shock Assault, and all that. It's, it's just a glorious thing. And I have to say that Iron Hands are my favorite Space Marine chapter. They have been for a long time. The story of Ferris Manus, He's the only truly dead Primark unless they retcon that. And they're truly, they're, it's a tragic chapter. The flesh is weak and all that sort of stuff, which they're not. My gone. prediction? Yeah. Ferris Manus is going to be in a dreadnought. Yeah? Yeah, head in a dreadnought. Head in a dreadnought. That's dreadnought. what my money's going on. <laughs> Ferris Manus comes back in a dreadnought body. But yeah, they're such a tragic Space Marine chapter. It's, um, I, I just like them. And now they're just so stoic and machine minded and, Anyway, before I wax liloquy about it, where are we starting? What are we looking at? What's going on here? Say hi, Paul. Who's your Warlord right. stuff? Right, okay. So I've got to do a little bit of explanation about how Iron Hands are different and clans and so on and what GW have done with the narrative. And, yes. Uh, I'll try and keep it as brief as I can. Okay. So the new book changes the narrative somewhat. They've changed it a few times over the years. Um I'm sticking with what it was about 15 years ago because partly because I haven't had time to update the army and the decals and, and all that stuff, but me mainly because I, I prefer it. Okay. So each of the 10 companies yep. is effectively its own army. Yeah. Uh, it's a clan. Yeah. It has, it's, the structure is similar to a normal codex chapter in that it's got six battle line troops, two close support troops, two fire support units. Yeah. But it has its own cadre of scouts. Yeah. It has its own cadre of veterans. And it maintains its own um, armory, its own librarius, its own apothecarian. They are effectively ten little chapters. Nice. That sometimes fight together. And they are ruled by the Iron Council. They don't have a single chapter master. They have a council. And the council decide what clan goes where, what they do, and, and all that good stuff. Um, I could go on for a very long time about all this, but <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try and keep it brief. So, this is um, Clan Cargill. Uh, it's a demi company, as you mentioned earlier. So, we have three battle line units 10 man tactical squad, um, missile launcher flamer, another 10. Uh, man tactical squad, missile launcher, flamer, power fist, and a ten man intercessor squad with two auxiliary grenade launchers. Yep. Um, the close support are the ten bike, uh, ten the nine bikes, but yep. one of them has two on it, so it's ten, ten guys. Yeah. Ten guys. And that's one squad. That's one squad. Yep. Uh, the sarge has got a thunder hammer. There's also a plasma gun and a melter gun in there as well. Yep. This is a 10-man Devastator squad mm -hmm. with uh, two Grav, two Multi-Melter, yeah. and the Sarge has got a Combi Grav and a Power Axe. Yeah. It's interesting to note that one of the rules that the Space Marines have is you can combat squad, so for every full squad, when you deploy, you can split into five-man squads if you so choose to. And that's a nice little rule that you have to increase the tactical flexibility. I think it's also quite narrative as well. It represents the tactical flexibility of the Space Marines. Well, in most chapters, you paint one of the... One of the Battle Brothers in a squad has yeah. got similar markings to the Sergeant. Yeah. And that's because when the squad splits... Yeah. Um, they lead the second squad. Yeah. So my Blood Angels, for example, until GW changed it, which I've refused to paint over on my models, <laughs> red pads with a black trim. Yeah. But the Sarge always have a red trim and a black pad. Yeah. And another member of the squad has the same as well, and they lead that squad when... They combat squad. When they combat squad. Yeah. I digress. Yes. So we have five of the company veterans in Terminator armor. Terminator, they're good now. 
They're good. Well, and also the interesting thing about Iron Hands is you can move and fire that missile launcher, re-roll and hit rolls of one. It doesn't change whether or not I take it. I've, I mean, I've played this army for years and it's been terrible. Yeah. I think it's going to do a bit better today. Yeah, I think so. Okay, we've got five scouts for Sergeant Heavy Bolter in a... Storm. Uh, storm. Yes. Tragically, the um, telemetry stratagem doesn't exist anymore, so I can't use the land speeder to aim the whirlwind with. Right. Uh, that's gone. But you've got um, many other glorious strategies yeah, to play with. I'm still a sad panda. <laughs> okay, good. so from the armory, we yeah. have whirlwind, vindicator, predator... Yeah, I like the fact that you brought a Vindicator because no one does because as soon as they move, they're hitting on fours. I've yeah. never not taken it. It's just yeah. never done anything. Yeah, but now it might. Now it hitting might. on threes, re-rolling ones. It may well do something. Do something, which is glorious. Uh, Thunderfire Cannon as well is interesting. Ah, yes. It's a awesome two-up save and that hits on twos. Yeah. Yeah. So it could move and still hit on twos. It will also do something, ones. potentially. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, whirlwinds are back, people. Particularly in Iron Hands. <laughs> it is pure coincidence. I've had it for years. Yes, I know. Uh, four Servitors? Yes. Have, you've got to have Servitors with Tech Marines. Yes, they hit on fives. Unless they're with the Tech Marine, then they hit on fours. Okay. And they can heal stuff. No, they, I don't think they can anymore. Uh, I think they aid him, his dice roll for healing stuff. I don't I think. think they do anymore. No? Okay. I don't think so. We'll check that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so also, also from the Armoury, we yeah. have four Dreadnoughts. This is uh, Venerable Brother... Oh, God damn it, I forgot his name. Oh, God damn it, that's an odd name for 40k. His name is... Oh, God damn it, it's Raman. Raman. He's the former captain of the clan company who was interned in Dreadnought when okay. he fell. Okay. Now, I've spent a command point on uh, a Paragon of Iron, yes. which makes him a character. Nice. So, he's a two-up hit in Venerable Dreadnought re-roll and hit rolls of one. And because he's a character, I can't target him. Because, unless he's the closest thing. But, interestingly enough, it's just so narrative making Dreadnoughts a character in our, because in hands, he, he is a venerable Dreadnought and in Clan Cargill, he is that guy. And I've given him the Tempered Helm. Right. Okay, it's not technically a helm, but it's, uh, it's a Savant processor uh, which filters incoming information and presents compartmentalized strategic sections, granting a near omnipotent... Om Omnipotent level of instant battlefield organisation. It's a command point farm. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well, he's an old captain in a dreadnought and he knows the way of the warp. No, he knows the way of the war. And so yeah, he the can. The war! Um, wow. Full stop, no P. Yeah, and he can um, bring back some command points. Yeah, so he's using got... his ancient knowledge. Yeah. So he's got Twin Last Cannon, Heavy Flame, and a dreadnought fist. Yep. We have a Redemptor yep. re representing the Primaris. With in all it, the guns. In it. Yeah. Uh, what's he got? He's got, he's got all the guns. He's got the flamer, he's got the big shooty gun and the, the chest guns. Yes. They've got names, they could be anything. Uh, ironclad. Ironclad with two hunter seekers, siege thingy, hurricane, uh, bolt. hurricane bolter. Yep. I'm getting technical here. Uh, dread, Dreadnought Fist, multi melter. See, Dreadnoughts with multi melters and Power Fist, you don't see them anymore. But again, in Iron Hands. I've used him for years! It's, yeah, it's good to see him back again. Um, the um, Rhino with a Whirlwind, uh, with, a, with a launcher on it. Now, this is, if you want to be really gamey, and if you want to be really a powerful Iron Hands list, I would bring Triple Storm Talons, because Storm Talons are all called Strafing Run. When they hit ground targets, it's plus one to hit roll. They're moving and firing those heavy weapons without penalty. So they're moving and firing and hitting ground targets on a two-up, re-rolling ones with strafing run, which is epic. So bringing three of them in an iron's hands list is the way to go. That, my friend, is not how I roll. I know that's not how you roll, and that's why you've only brought one today. And this is a demi-company which has unlocked some support from the armory. And so there is one air support coming in. I'm just I telling it to the people outside. People, if you're watching this, basically triple predators, triple storm talons start from there. If you want a really powerful list. <sighs> so I originally bought that as an escort for um, my Blood Angel Storm Raven. Right. And then they never added it to the Blood Angel list. No, they didn't so, for ages. For didn't ages. They? So I thought oh, I went, oh, blow it, and I painted it up in Iron Hands. A couple of months later, they added it to the Blood Angel list. Yeah, it was just before the end of seventh. Suddenly, yeah. you could add them to Blood Angel. They weren't even added to Grey Knights until the start of eighth. 
Yeah. But so you can get them for all sports. What it really means is I've got to do a Storm Talon for this army so we can escort it. Yeah. Storm Talon and a Storm Raven. I like it. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned the Scar. Yeah, we're Should on to characters, dude. Are we on to characters? We are on to characters. characters. Tech Marine full servo harness. Yep. Librarian. And he's got some of the new psychic powers. You said yes, you're going to use the one that pulls bits of metal off enemy vehicles and throws he's it at other ones. That is called Machine Flens. And then the one that makes my weapons get hot when I fire them. Obduration Mechanicum. Uh, basically cursing. I mean, I've got a lot of DACA coming out of you, so that one could come in very useful against orcs. i am also spent a command point on an extra relic for that guy. Right. And he has got the Iron Stone. So, um... The Librarian? Yeah. Yeah. So, vehicles within... Th friendly Iron Hands vehicles within three inches of him. When they yep. get damaged, it reduces the damage by one to a minimum of one. That's an epic relic. Because Iron Hands re uh, can heal vehicles or... Well, Tech Marines heal vehicles, put D3 wounds back on a vehicle. But there's also a stratagem that you can use to do it twice. <laughs> so, you could put D3 and then another D3 back on a vehicle... And then minus one to the damage coming in on vehicles. This guy gives a five up and vulnerable save to units all within six inches of him. And he does a flat three re -heal, healing, healing when he heals vehicles up. And then we've got another tech marine, another tech marine. Let's talk about this guy. Is he your warlord today? He is. He is indeed. So that's Iron Father Malkan Ferios. Nice. Uh, technically, I think he originates from Clan Rakuan. However... Um, my interpretation of the narrative is that the Iron Council will lead any of the clans yes. to warp, so I think it's fine. Yeah. I think. I need to do a little bit more digging. I haven't had, I've only had the book in my hands for yesterday and today. Well, who's so. a member of the Iron... I was painting him yesterday. He's a member of the Iron Council. He's got this clan with him to do this deed. It makes perfect narrative. That's, yeah, that's what I think. That's yeah. what I think. But I'm not certain yet, so uh, maybe I will, when I dig around a bit more, find out that's not right and I have to file the shoulder pad down and rename him. <laughs> yeah. And just have him as a generic Primaris Iron Father. Who knows? Yes. But for today, he's uh, he's Ferros because I can't find a reason not to at the minute. So he's your Warlord. Five up and vulnerable save to stuff within six inches of him. There's other buffing things that he does. Then we have another Tech Marine and a, another Tech Marine. Lots of opportunities to heal vehicles should they get damaged here. Tech Marines are cheap as well. I like them. Um, and they fit the narrative for um, Iron Hands less. What is this? He, gets, he gets the Warlord trait that lets him consolidate six inches in any direction he wants. I know, that's a good one as well. Mm. That's a good one after he. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So, um, 3,000 points of Iron Hands. Let's go on to deployment. And we've deployed for this 3,000 point match play game of retrieval. Four objectives on the table. He who takes it at the end of the game will win and. He who drops first, it goes, I went in, 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 in. He who drops first gets to choose whether they want to go first or second. And say hi, Paul dropped way before me. And uh, But I'll show you my stuff. Um, it's a tight fit. <laughs> Track to go. Uh, the main thing I did was I built a castle here. There's Weird Boy Will and Grugger Chugger and the big mech with his custom force field. So the two big squads of... Slugger Chopper Boys and the Looters and this squad of bikes have all got a 5-up and vulnerable save and that mech gun. So there's a big squad ready to go that way. Simple. And there's some bikes and there's another gun and there's uh, fast stuff on the flanks. And when we got down and started having a look, I set up a table that's got some huge line of sight blocking terrain all over the place. There are some nice fire angles here, but it's only here. You can fire that way. That way you can't fire at all. <laughs> And then over here, really nice firing angle, but it's, there's lots of stuff that way and you can't fire that way at all. So the best place for the uh, looters, I thought, was there with their grot shields. So they have got a bit of an angle that way and a bit of an angle that way, but nothing up the middle. Um, but they have got 48 inch range guns. They're only strength 7 AP minus 1. But um, I think it gave them the best field of fire because after turn 1 at least, stuff will be moving. And then I put two more guns and the shooter boys and some more fast stuff out on the flanks. Essentially, fast stuff on the flanks, big swarm of boys in the middle, and I didn't pay any attention to what Paul was doing. Paul, what have you done? Well, um, the Is Iron it? Hands and particularly Clan Cargill are renowned for their tactical, tactical genius. Okay. Clan Cargill will plan everything to the nth degree before even lifting off. Nice. So... 
they are uh, their plans are flawless. Their opponents already lost before um, a, a shot's been fired. So, however. Yeah. I am an idiot, <laughs> and I have no idea how to plan anything like that. Right. So I um, I put stuff down. Yes. And I'm hoping and praying that the dice gods make me look good. So this guy is the guy who gives everything a five-up and vulnerable save. Yes. And he's your character. I can't shoot at this dreadnought. Yes. See, I I would be tempted to put all the vehicles within a castle around him. Wouldn't that made have made more sense? What I've done. Yes. I've put together the things I think are pushing forward. Right. And I've put together the things I think that are hanging back. So is he going to push forward? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> you nearly <laughs> said the F word. I nearly said flipping gosh, yes. Flipping gosh, yes. So he's going to be coming up the table. I, I've with... always, because the, the guy next to him used to be my own father model. Right. Uh, I've always pushed forward with him. Okay. Always. So they're pushing up with the dreadnoughts. Well, the dreadnoughts are going to need fixing up. That's true, as they come crashing forward. Yeah. Yeah. As well the Vindicator, but the Vindicator's kind of out on his own. Yeah, it's interesting, because this has only got a 24-inch range gun, and you've left him right on the flank. Um, but I guess anything that comes towards him... the flank him, is screwed. Yeah, anything that comes down the flank... Narratively like, speaking, those screwed. Those short-term dragsters. Stats-wise, yeah. oh, fine. Yeah. Um, and there's the Redemptor, so there's I've another... Have the... you combat squatted anything? No. No, okay. These things don't need a lot of sight, so I've yeah. got there. Thunderfire and Whirlwind. Yeah. Yeah. These two have got reasonably large lines of uh, ranged weapons, yeah. so I can move them in the first turn to get fire down either corridor, yeah. such as they are. Yeah. I don't really expect to shoot the orcs until turn two or three at this point. Um... My Devastator's already got a two-foot gun, so I've put them near the truck, so that when they come forward, they can try shooting them apart. Yeah, because those nothing, trucks aren't going to stay there, right? Nothing in your army's got a three-up save, so the grav is not going to be terribly effective. No. This tactical unit, it's just, just where I can put them. I'll go through the wall yeah. to, to be able to shoot. Fast um, stuff on the flanks, that's where it should be. Fast stuff on the flank with the tactical unit and the rhino. Okay, so there's a deceptively high number of stuff here. There's ten there, there's all the bikes, there's the scouts are inside the storm. Oh, yes, of course. So there's quite a cluster down here. Just well, the thing quick. is, I'm thinking to win the game, I yes. need three objectives. Yes. So I've got one in my zone, one by my zone, and I've got to take one from you. Or first blood, and we end up with one objective each, because the blood count will be so high, potentially, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but I'd rather not leave it to that. I've got stuff here that I think can sweep onto that objective. Yes. And I think I will be protected from your fire. Well, that was the idea. You had to put all your guns on this side, so it's... The idea was I'd be protected from fire from that direction. Right. And once I've hacked my way through all the boys, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, we shall see how that works. The lines of fire are shocking. Yeah. I'm actually tempted to let you go first. Really? Yeah, I'll get you closer so I can actually hit you. Most of the guns are two feet in this army. There's only okay. a few that aren't. Okay. But then again, if you, if you go first, I get the last turn jump on the objectives That's as well. That's true, actually. In this game, going second counts because I could be on a couple of objectives and you have the opportunity to push me off them. And you'd have but a the, fly, the Talon so wouldn't think... fire, that wouldn't fire. No, no, no. Well, yeah, but I don't know how much I'd care. The Talon, I think, is going to hover up here for most of the game. On well, there? Well, hovering yeah. away? Hovering away, out of just, just laying down fire. That... Yeah, they see this is that's where a thing. That's this is the thing. One of my armies. This is my one army that will most closely align with s traditional tournament play. Right. In that the Iron Hands are ruthlessly logical. They won't do any heroic. Oh, let's go and save those battle brothers over there. Yeah. If the objective means letting them die, that is what they choose to do. They okay. are cold and calculating. So. You are going to be playing the objectives for once. I am going to be playing, <laughs> not for once, it's the style of the army. Yeah. And the style of this, the, they don't care if they all die as yeah. long as they win. Right. And that is the way I will be playing them. Nice, okay. So that seems to me to be a perfect, the orcs don't look like they're having a thing that can fly. So just sit up there and mow things down. Okay, I'm going to be targeted by the tractor cannons. Well, but, there's a tractor cannon. I think I put the... Oh, there's two here. There's two up this side and two up the other side that I can pick on the If I get badly wounded, I can always nip down and get fixed by a tech marine. Oh, yeah, that's the thing as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> down to a couple of move, wounds. Just, just, hit, heal me up. It's like, okay, I'm only on four wounds, but actually double that. I'm still flying at full speed. Down here. Dum, yeah. dum, 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 and we're back. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a thing. Well, let's have a cup of tea and think about first turn. And so Murphy's War is on the rampage. This city is in ruins. 
but the Iron Tenth have calculated that this sector must be saved, say High Paul's choosing to go first. So I'm going to try and steal. And I don't steal. It's Iron Hands, turn one. Here we are after the Iron Hands movement phase, the Vindicator pushing forward. The Intercessor standing still so they can move and fire twice with Bolter Discipline. Paul was worried about me dead jumping something in the backfield, but then he thought, let them come. There is um, Iron Father Ferros with the Dreadnoughts. And the castle in the backfield, or rather the shooty stuff in the backfield, moved very uh, well. The Thunderfire and the Whirlwind didn't, but the Predator did to get better lines of fire. So pushing up, trying to breach the side of the Death Star, these large line of sight blocking terrain pieces, so that uh, as many guns as possible can get in range. Talking about as many guns as possible in range, there's the Storm Talon doing exactly what Paul said on the tin. He's got a commanding field of fire up there onto many, many, many boys. And then round here, the Devastators move forward, the Dreadnought move forward, just pushing forward. And there's been a concerted push on this flank with the Bikers, the Tactical Marines and the Scout Squad. It's, uh, it's a wave of black rumbling down towards the Orc Horde. Opening up the shooting phase, the Thunderfire Cannon is loading Tremor shells and is firing up and over into the big squad of 30 Orc boys. Didn't farm that command point back, but that is 4d3 shots coming in hot. 10 dice hitting on twos and re-rolling ones because it's a heavy weapon. You don't need the re-roll. No, okay. Now, tremor shells um, minus one to the strength. Strength, yeah. So your strength four versus toughness four. So you're wounded on fours. Fours. Minus yeah. one naturally, but the devastated doctor's in effect of minus two. Minus two. Okay, so fours to wound, and that is four wounds come through. Yep, four. But that big squad of boys is in range of the KFF, the custom force field. So I do get a five up and vulnerable save. And I do get six up through no pain from the pain boy. You kill two, but as soon as tremor shells hit a target, I half that move uh, the unit's movement characteristics and advanced characteristics and charge. and charge. So basically, slowing down how far this unit can go, and everything else behind it is going to bottleneck up. The iron hands doing the tactical thing there. After the thunderfire. Fired. Now this truck is um, being picked on by the Predator. Even though you moved, it's still hitting on threes because you're iron hands. Four las cannons coming in hot. Everything hits. And you're winning on threes. Everything wounds. Six up in vulnerable saves because I'm lucky. And I saved one of them. That's so lucky. Two it is lucky. Two D6 damage for one and a five. Come on, boy. No. And on a six with the ramshackle rule, which I don't get. I don't get a six. I would have reduced that to one. So ultimately, you do six damage to this truck. It's down to four left, but that's not first blood yet. After the pred, onto the rhino. It fired its storm bolter into the grot, killing one hunter killer coming into this truck, trying to finish it off. Threes to hit. It's a hit. Threes to wound. It's a wound. Am I lucky? No, I'm not. D6 damage. That's only one more damage. You are lucky. I am still lucky. Three left on this truck. Okay. More firepower erupted. Missile launchers firing from that squad there, which missed. A bolter from the Devastator squad killed the gr one of the grots. Then everything else from the Devastator squad, they've been told to bring this truck down. Two multi... Normally I call them multi-missers, but I'm going to call them multi-melters now because you're hitting on threes and re-rolling ones. And one hit, one missed. Got down two. <laughs> uh, threes to win. Oh yeah, I need to do that bit. Yes. It wounds, six up and fun. I'm not lucky. Uh, D6 damage for five damage, just, which becomes... Just watch, just watch. A six. On a six, did, it becomes one. Did you need that bit? No, I needed that bit. You kill the truck, it blows up on a six. It doesn't blow up. There are 11 boys inside, and one, two of them die as they scramble out of the wreckage. It looks like this, got them all out within three inches of the truck and hiding a little bit because there's lots and lots of firepower raining down from those bikes over there. But it won't keep the boys safe from the Redemptor Dreadnought. Now, normally these things move and fire and hit on fours. But you're on hands, uh -huh. so you're doing it on threes. And a rolling one. Yes, the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon raining hot lead into the squad of shooter boys. And re-roll those 
Ones. Many, many ones. And, and a chunk of twos again. And four twos. Hmm. I like to call those winters. <laughs> Not the winters. Yeah, okay. So, um, seven hits. Three to win? Yes. And this would be AP minus two. If this is AP minus two, because the Devastator Doctrine is in effect. But I have a six up. Lucky save. And two of them are lucky, only three of them die. And it looks like this. Now the second truck is getting targeted by a swarm of hailfire coming in from the bikes. The multi motor will do that first, hitting on A3 and wounding on A3 with A6 up invulnerable. New D6 damage for four. It becomes a one on a six. New, it does four damage. There's six wounds left on that truck. The plasma gun came in and didn't wound. Then we had 36 rapid firing bolter shots because bolter discipline is a thing. Hitting on threes, winning on fives, and it was a six. Six wounds got through. The truck has six four-up saves. And uh, I only lose two more wounds. Four wounds left on the truck. Now we're across to the Storm Talon and the Scouts inside because you can fire out on them, even when you're in bucks. There's a heavy bolter on the Storm Talon hitting the truck on threes. And we're going to do the heavy bolter of the guys inside at the same time because I see the dice in your hand. Are we going to do it all together? I'll, I'll do the Storm Talon first, and yes. then the, the occupants. Nice, okay. Three to hit, Storm he Heavy D6 on the Cerberus launcher. Right. Two. Hitting on threes, rolling ones. Yeah. Strength four, winning on a five. No. no. Okay. And the Heavy Bolter. Right. And threes, we've got... Oh, that hitting hit. hit. Winning on fours. Fives. Fives, yeah. Strength five versus toughness six, yeah. Ooh, two get three. Two. Uh, minus hey, two. So six up and buns. Uh, it's down to three wounds left. I keep uh -huh. making them, don't I? You do. The heavy bolt from the guys inside. Yeah, lucky blue git who isn't lucky. Why well, he wasn't blue? No, but we believe we're lucky, so we're lucky. Because that's how orc work. That's how it works with orcs. Don't, don't, yes, don't it, get does. Onto it. it don't, does. It does. We believe we're lucky. You can of worms, mate. Can of worms. <laughs> we roll one. Five we're five. doing on fires, we can do that again. Oh, that'll do. Okay. Minus Six, two. Sixes. I've done a one. Two wounds left. The grenade launcher? We did the grenade launcher. Oh, no, that was the Cerberus launcher from the thing. You've got a gren Have you got a grenade launcher on the No, we've got three bolters. Right, okay. One, One more wind. Four, four up. The truck's still on two wounds left, mate. Yeah. Right, there's nothing on this side of the battle grid anymore that can target that truck, except for the Whirlwind, but the Whirlwind can fire indirectly and fire everywhere. And Storm Talon. All the Storm Talon up there, but... Um, well, we're keeping them in his pocket for now. Instead, we come all the way across to the left flank because you really want the truck dead, right? You want to try murder because well, there's speed there and they can move and start raining. What? I'd, yeah, I'd rather they had a longer charge. Oh, I see. Yeah, get out and then. Yeah, imagine though a unit of boys charging them and they're overwatching on a. Like, they wouldn't overwatch on a five. There wouldn't be very many boys left. No, I know. I could even spend them. I'm just making a four. Yeah. So we're coming all the way over here to the Vindicator, which is firing at the unit of knob ball bikers. Yeah, are so they you, knobs? They are knobs on bikes. Are yeah. they all knobs? They are, they, all of these are knobs. Okay. Yes. D6 shots for five yeah. shots. That's a glorious thing. Because we're iron hands, hitting on threes and rerolling those ones. Oh, look at that. See, Vindicator is normally doing nothing, but all five shots get through. This is strength 10. We're doing twos. Yes. Yes. Ouch. Right. You're firing at the squad that isn't in range of the custom force field. It's AP minus... Three. Three. I'm entirely within terrain and obscured. So my four up becomes a three up, but it's minus three. So it's six up and minus six up. Basically sixes. I need sixes. How lucky am I? Not lucky at all. And each one does D6 damage, right? Yeah, how many wounds have the bikes got? They have three each. Okay, let's go. Dead. Dag nabbit. Dag nabbit. Okay, two's dead. Three's dead. You kill three out of five. I've got two bikes left. Um, what was that, Paul? Oh, oh uh, yeah, that was lucky. <laughs> Where are we going next? Right. Ironclad. Yes. Two hundred killing missiles into that truck. Right. And Hurricane Bolter yeah. into that unit of boys. Into the boys. Yeah. That are tremor shelled. Yeah, I still need to whittle them down. Yeah, okay. Hunter killers. Must be whittled. Hitting on threes. And re-rolling ones. Are they both hit? Target acquired. acquired. He knows what he's doing. Threes to wound. One wound. Come on, boy. Nah. Uh, five up and vulnerable save, because there's my KFF. Uh, no. D6 damage. Now, do you blow off a bit I don't need on a six? That's what she said. Uh, no. Five wounds left on the truck. Two boys in the squad 
died to the Hurricane Bolter, then two more from the Storm Bolter from that Dreadnought, which is also firing its multi-melter, in at this truck. Now, that multi-melter is actually hitting on a two, because once per turn, that guy, Theros, can give a unit within him plus one ballistic skill. Mm -hmm. You declare at the start of the shooting phase. You did that at the start of the shooting phase. So this multi-melter hitting on a two into my truck. And it wounds on a three. Here we go. Oh, it does wound. Minus what? Five up in fun. The custom oh, force you, field holds firm. You do one of those. Right, yes. Then the intercessors unloaded. Some firepower coming into the bikes. No wounds caused. Two more wounds stripped off this truck with the nobles inside. It's got three wounds left. And say hi, Paul's beginning to run out of gun. We've got Ferros, we've got the Dreadnought, the, uh, the Storm Talon up here, beginning to run out of guns. He's done some significant damage so far, but there's still a lot of boys left. So the Venerable Dreadnought can see, because line of sight is a thing, can see this tractor cannon down here. It's about all you can see. Yeah, hitting on twos because he's a Venerable. And he rerolls ones because he's an Iron Hand. Oh, only one hit. Oh, one's well. on a three. It does wound. It's AP minus many. I don't get a save, and it only does one damage. <laughs> the gun's got five wounds left. They start with six. Well, that gun was lucky. Um, what are you firing next, Paul? Right, well... Storm Talon time, I think. Right, okay. He's uh, in a target-rich environment. Yeah. Well, I really want all your trucks dead. What about so, the looters? The thing is, I'm just going to kill Grotz. You are. I will Grotz shield it. I'm not worried about the looters for the Dreadnoughts. Right. I've got stratagems and stuff that could keep the Dreadnoughts alone. Okay. Around. The only thing I'm particularly worried about is the Storm Talon. But you can only see it with about five of them, so... Yeah, I know. The angle up there isn't, it's, it's, isn't yeah, great. I know. Yeah. So, actually, I'm not too stressed right about now. About the... Okay. Uh, so, what I think you're going to do is the, the unit that can't move very quickly. And if, this if, one. if you haven't already thought of this, I'm giving you ideas and I should just shut my cake hole. However, <laughs> actually, it's more of a pie hole than a cake hole. I digress. Um, I think you'll jump the unit that can't move very quickly forward. Right. So it doesn't have to move. Yes. And that'll slow your thing down. Uh, you can speed up then. Yes. So, for two reasons. Um, one, I want a smaller unit to jumping on me. Right. So that's why I'm going to shoot that with the assault cannon. Right. The um, Typhoon missile launcher, I'll put two crack into the truck because I want all your trucks dead. I want your mobility gone. Okay. And I know you've still got buggies and stuff, but... You want to slow me right down. I want to slow you right down. I like it. Okay. So what are we firing first? So let's put the assault cannon to the boys. So cannon into the boys. It's festive. Two's to hit because you're an iron hand. Rerolling ones. ones. This is glorious. Because they is... would hit on threes, but they ignore the penalty. <laughs> move, but yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, years and years of this army being shockingly bad. And now, now it's good. <laughs> Wounding on threes because it's strength six versus toughness. Oh right. dear. I am in range of a custom force field, so I do get a uh, five up. Wow, some of them are very lucky. Um, and then I am in range of my pain boy. And I don't save any of them, so I'm going to lose four. And then I just realised something. I realised I placed that truck really badly, because if it dies, you've got to get out units within three inches. Not wholly within. You can have the back of the base within three. And I'd have only really been able to get about five out, so I took boys from here. So now I can get um, all of the boys out if the truck dies. And pray to the Emperor. No, pray to Gork or Mork that Paul didn't fire at the truck first. <laughs> but let's try and kill the truck. I'm now cursing the tech marine in there who should have realised that he could have created a deadly tin can inferno surrounded by other greenskins yes. by popping the tank. For, yes, well I made a mistake in deployment. You made, anyway, let's, uh, let's blow the truck. Twos and threes. Threes. Okay, it is in custom force field range. I need fives. I failed both of them. 2d6 damage? Right, it's on three left. And on a six, I'll do six, this becomes a one. Yeah. Nope, that's still two damage. And Don't on a do six. It. Actually, mind it you, matter. yeah, even if this becomes a one, that's three damage. That's a dead truck which blows up on a six. Don't blow up. Okay, there's ten nobles inside plus the banner. Nobles die on ones. Uh, command point? Yeah, command point. Oh no. All right, so all that shenanigans didn't really help. Anyway, I lost four of the knobs as they came scrambling out of the truck, but they looted it as they came scrambling out of the truck. Um, you can do it if you're embarked in a vehicle. One command point stratagem. It says so in the fact. So um, 
they get plus one to their armor save. So instead of a four up, they now have a three up. And that's where they are. It's not going to help them very much from Ferros though, because <laughs> he's now firing his heavy bolt ring. This guy hits on twos, and it's strength five, so he'll wound on threes. Are they not tough as five or not? No, they're tough as four, but with many attacks. Okay, so two wounds, and it's minus two, two damage each, his magical heavy red like bolt of doom. They have two wounds each, so I need fives, and I failed them both, and two more die. So I spent two command points trying to keep the knobs alive, but there's only four left. The withering firepower of the Iron Hands being too much for me there. Now we're on to the Whirlwind. Paul doing what he said he would do, trying to take away my mobility. The last gun left to fire up and over. It can see the truck anyway, but it can fire indirectly. Firing two D3 shots into this truck here for five shots. That's pretty good. And you're hitting on threes. Rear on ones. Yeah. Uh, there's a one. Okay, so four hits come in. Strength seven, toughness six, so threes to wound. Oh dear, nothing wounded. And you could command point it because it does do two damage command a time. Point. You are. It does wound. It's minus two. I need a six to keep this truck alive or this one falls. It goes pop as well on a six. It goes pop. I really don't want it to go pop in my lines, but I've already spent a command point on a reroll. Right, it does blow up, but what I should have done is rolled a six to ramshackle it. And that six would have ramshackled it, but I'm gonna roll a six again, and that two damage weapon will become a one damage weapon if I get a six. Oh, um, right, of course. No, it still blows up. When it exploded, it put wounds on everything around it, as you can see by the dice, and one guy died in the shooter boy squad there, and there's 11 people inside. People? Orcs. And one, two of them die as they scramble out. Orcs of people too. So I disembarked the shooter boys here, knowing that's the end of the shooting phase. Paul thinking about suppression fire on the whirlwind and the thunder fire, but keeping those command points in his pocket for other tricksy things next turn. And that's the end of the shooting phase. And it was a brutal shooting phase. You didn't farm back any command points. Um, the bait. Are you falling for the bait? Are you going to charge in? No, logical head prevails. I'd rather shoot at you than hit you, because I'll get shot for something if you charge me. That's true. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of the shooting phase. We have trucks dying and boys dying all over here. That's pretty good. Lots of mortal wounds carried out. Gretchen died. Um, 11 in this squad died, so their morale is 19. They won't need to roll morale. And the nobles are within six inches of them, so they won't need to roll morale as well because of mob rule. So they're going to stick around, even though six of them died in that squad. That was painful. Um, and the truck died, and three in this squad died. Um, I need to roll morale for these guys. Their leadership is seven plus one. They're going to hold. Um, two Gretchen died. Their leadership is four. <laughs> they hold somehow, somewhere. Um, some in this squad died. Uh, they'll be okay. Five in this, uh, six in this squad died. I'm not spending any command points. Keep six. Uh, uh, the, the, they're all gone. Actually, that just leaves the boss knob stood there with his big chopper, wondering where all the boys have got to. And um, that's it for turn one for the Iron Hands. They have scored first blood, but Murphy's War are revving their engines, ready to charge forward towards these scru scrawny umies. Scrawny umies. Time to kill them. Let's go to Orcs, turn one. Here we are after the boys' movement phase. I'm already thinking. Um, the easiest thing is, all the tractor cannons and maybe the custom mega cannons can fire up. I can't have this talent flying around and hitting on twos and re-rolling ones all game. That needs to die, so that's priority target number one. Then the other thing I did was I advanced the both of the knob bikers up here because they can advance and charge if they're in range of a death killer war trike. There's some umies over there, so let's jump on them. And the squad that is stumbling its way across the ground under the rain of tremor shells, they advanced as well. They only moved five in total, the squad moving up behind them. There's my pain boy, there's weird boy Will. There's the big mech. <laughs> There's um, there's Grugger Chugger. There's there's the coterie of characters. Haven't moved the nobles because I'm gonna de jump them. I just I don't know where. I honestly don't know where. There's see there's only four of them and you hit on fives on Overwatch. 
So the trick is to try and charge you with more than one thing because you're going to hit on fours on Overwatch with that nasty stratagem. So I need to charge more than one thing. I can't just charge them. I need to charge more than one thing. So one thing will be hit me on fours. The other stuff has hit me on fives. And yeah, so I'll, I'll figure that out when I get there. But I will to jump them at some point. And then over here, they move forward. I don't really know why, because I'm hitting off mimes on Overwatch. <laughs> and there's a tactical squad in there, and there's a unit of scouts in there. Uh, yeah, um, let's go into the psychic phase. Weird Boy Will casting Warpath on the bikes. It's a seven, but I've got plus three to this because of the uh, wah energy. And I perils and do D3 wounds to myself. Uh, four, two, which I can save on sixes because of the Bane Boy. Um, he takes a wound, but he's got a little bit of a headache. Now I'm going to jump the knobs. This is a six plus three, so that passes. You could deny that, but that's a nine. So, I mean, it's the only other power I'm going to do. So if you ten, ten it. No, um, now I'm going to jump them. I just don't know where. Right, I found a place. Well, Paul found a place. Why didn't you charge the Vindicator? I thought that was a good idea. And he said put them there. And then after some careful measuring, very careful measuring, I put them behind the wall. So the Vindicator can't see him. So I can charge the Vindicator without getting shot by the Vindicator. Still a nine inch charge, but I can re-roll with here we go. With here we go. That's the one. And I'm at nine inches of the Intercessor squad as well. And if I fail the charge, Ooh. I'll be in cover. And they have a threat save right now, which is a top save to cover what you're thinking, Paul. I'm thinking or spec scan. Let me go and read a card. Could have used all spec scan there. It does cost two command points and it would be forced to hit and have a two up save because I'm in cover and I looted it, but minus one and only five could see. Basically, not enough DACA. Not worth it. Not enough DACA, my friend. Right, um, that's the end of the psychic phase. Let's try and tear that storm down from the sky. Tom Talon from the sky, starting with this tractor cannon, which hits. Tractor cannons also hit. So it's strength eight, toughness six, I think. Wounds on a three. It wounds at minus two, sir. Save so five up. Yes. And you nope. don't make the save. Right, against vehicles that can fly, it's got the melt roll. It's 2d6 and pick the highest. Mm. So this does three damage, but you ignore them on sixes because you're an iron hands. They build Fletch them is weak. tough. No. no. So three wounds stripped off. Gun number two hits. Wounds on a three. It wounds. Five up save. Yes. Okay, gun number... Where's the other one? Fair. Yes, this, it. this, this one. Doesn't wound. Last one in the corner. Does wound. Five up save. Yes. So four tractor cannon beams converge on this storm talon. And it's still got seven wounds left. So the custom shot cannon thing... This thing is going to fire it. Custom has, mega cannon. Thank you. D6 shots for three. I'm hitting on fives because I'm firing up at the sky. And on ones and twos, I do a wound to myself. But two hit, and there's a daka daka daka, unmodified hit rolls of sixes. Nope, two hits. This is AP minus three, though, these guns. Sixes? Yes. No. Nope. Two D it's six D6 damage a time. So that's seven damage, enough to bring it down, but it's iron hands, so it ignores them on sixes. And it's got two wounds left. Two wounds left. So the last gun, D6 shots. For two, damn it. Do I want a command point already? Nah. Hitting on fives. One on. hit. Wounding on a three. It wounds, minus three. Right, D6 damage. I need to take two wounds off of it. That's three. You need two sixes to keep it alive. New, and the Storm Talon is down. We have a Storm Talon down. It took all six of my mech guns there to take that one talon down. Right, coming across here to the shock jump dragsters, I'm going to fire my shock rifle, custom shock rifle. With targeting squig, it has a targeting squig, so it hits on threes, because squigs can fire better than orcs. It makes sense, they've got more brains. Threes, into the Vindicator. And that's one hit. It is strength eight. I think Vindicator's a toughness eight. They are. And it doesn't wound. i am just suddenly remembered something. I just suddenly remembered something. I can reroll one hit, one room, one damage per turn. But oh, the, you, but the you, mech guns don't get that because they're grots. Correct. 
but I can re-roll the hit with the custom shock thingy bob, which misses and causes a mortal wound to me. And I can re-roll, re-roll the, the wound. wound. Which doesn't wound anyway, and I'll put a wound on one of my things. And a rocket fires out. But the fact that you've remembered, it's superb. Uh, it doesn't wound. <laughs> it does wound. Rockets to strength eight. Minus two. We're good. <laughs> right, the next one. Three's to hit with the squig. And I can re-roll that. Okay, they both hit. Strength eight. They both wound. It's minus three. D6 damage. Sixes. No. Nope. 2d6 damage. That's uh, 11. Uh, 9 damage. 9 6 up Flesh's weak saves. And you save 3 of them. Huzzah! So it's on 7 left, and then the rocket fires out. I've on lost a, 7. On one, you lost 7, yeah. I've lost 7. Rocket fires out, that was cocked. 5s, no, misses. So the Vindicator's on 4 wounds left. Then the knobs on bikes fired everything into the intercessors there. I was hitting on sixes because I advanced, and I have a two up save because they're in a ruin, and I didn't do any damage. So um, now I'm coming all the way down here. Uh, big guns that never tire. There's a rivet cannon on this custom booster blaster firing into the bikes. This is a two damage weapon. This is why I'm picking on the bikes. Uh, six shots as well. So fives to hit. I can reroll one of them because I'm lucky. So only two hits. It is strength seven. Both wound. Minus two, two damage. So five. Nice. And you make them both. Yeah, we're good. And then the grots fire their pistols. And one hits. Doesn't wound. Right, the other one doing the same thing. Grots are out of range from this other one firing in. Fives. And re one because I'm lucky. And then I've got three there. Daka, daka, dakas for so more dakas. So which don't in turn generate more hits. So four hits in total with all the rivets being fired in your general direction. Threes to wound. Reroll one of them. So two wounds, two five up saves. And you fail um, both. Now each of them does two damage. So you need to do two then two because bikes are two wounds each. Sixes and sixes. I kill two bikes. Then after the buggy's fired, the shooter boy's fired. In at the bikes and the flesh is weak. They manage to withstand all the firepower and I'm already running out of gun. I've killed a couple of bikes, tickled a Vindicator, took the Storm Talon down. Um, basically, I'm on to the looters. Now, I could fire a Dreadnought um, and they are damaged two weapons and I could fire at these Dreadnoughts over here but you're next to the Gorgon's Chain or something. A relic which basically reduces all the damage of incoming fire by one. On vehicles. On vehicles. Within so three inches. <laughs> so all the firepower that comes down here, instead of damage two, I'll be damage one. And your iron hands. And you're going to heal because there's tech marines near. Basically, I don't think I can kill a dreadnought in one turn. And you've got a five up and vulnerable save. And you can oh, put yeah. another stratagem on them to half all the damage. Basically, dreadnoughts are unkillable unless I put everything into them. Or D6 damage weaponry into them. They're so resilient. So instead, I think looters are just going to fire at a rhino. Yeah. If I fire at that rhino, it gives something for my shooter boys to charge. Because um, there'll be less overwatch coming out from the squad inside than there will be from all of these bikes. So, uh, what? I'm just really happy. <laughs> Iron hands are good again. D3 shots from the looters. They have one shot each. Command point! Well, I've already spent a command point on more Dakar. There's 15 shots coming out. I think that'll be enough. Dakaring away on fives, and with the more Dakar stratagem, any fives oh, or good, sixes mate. count as. I get three more shots. Only three hits so far. That is not good. And the extra shots. Uh, four, four shots. Four shots get through. <laughs> We're only on fours. Uh, oh, I can re-roll one hit, one moon. You're I'm lucky. lucky. Well, you're not that lucky. So there you go. That's the re-roll. But that is going to generate another... Was that to hit? Yes. That's going to do another one. Yes. Which won't do another one. Okay. So two more wound rolls. Which then need to wound. Yeah, but you've got one wound re-roll roll to one. re-roll, yeah. Okay. So that's three. 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 Three get through at minus, minus one. Minus one. Same on fours. Yes. And then that's six damage, which you ignore on sixes. No, no, the fours are pass. Oh, yeah. Four damage, which you ignore on sixes. I take four wounds off a rhino. Right, that's the end of my shooting phase. Didn't kill very much, but at least the guns made loud banging noises, which keeps the boys happy. You killed three Astartes, and I think that's acceptable. <laughs> and a Storm Talon. Don't forget the Storm Talon. That's one of the Astartes. 
Right, okay. Let's go into the charge phase. I'm going to charge the Vindicator. With? With the Noble set to jump back here. And it's a nine inch charge. And I can re-roll any one of the dice with, um, here we go. Oh, we're in. Noble's make it there. Now we're on to this big squad of five bikes. I'm charging the Intercessors, sir. Would you like to overwatch on fives? And only the Intercessors. Only the Intercessors with this big swarm, yes. I shall have a think. Right, off camera we did the overwatch. You chose to overwatch on fives instead of spending the stratagem on fours. Why only fives, Paul? Why didn't you burn that stratagem? Well, they're tough as five, so it's much harder to wound them. Yeah. And yeah, I only did two wounds, so it's not an efficient use of the command points. No, but you know what happened to me there? What? You were hitting on fives. That was orc shooting coming back at me in yeah. overwatch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so one down to one wound because they have three wounds each. This is the charge. That's 11. Now that is actually quite interesting. Now with a long bomb charge, I was thinking about tagging the Dreadnought, but it's a Dreadnought. So let's just charge the Intercessors. I'd be able to heroically intervene. intervene with those two on their yes. beasts. Right, now these two units are tied up. Let's charge this other squad here into That's... the Vindica and the Intercessor. That's not enough to hit either of them. That is. Vind Vindicator. A Vindicator is an assassin. So the second squad are there. Right, more charges. Let's go all the way over here to the squad of shooter boys. I will charge the Rhino, and only the Rhino, with this big squad here. We'll do the Overwatch with the Stormbolter in a second. I want a big charge. That's a 10. That is a big charge, because um, I want to try and wrap it. And we end up here. Now, dirty. I need to be dirty, because I only killed three Astartes in the first turn. I was thinking about wrapping the Rhino and trying to crack it open, and then he wouldn't be able to get the unit out. But, two things with that. I don't think I can crack the Rhino in one turn, and I couldn't stop some of them getting out. Some of them would have definitely got out. But what I can do is when I pile in, you pile into the closest model, so I could tag these bikes. And they only have one attack each. Shock Assault kicks in if you get charged, or you charge or heroically intervene, not if you consolidate in. So I could tag the bikes and shut them down from shooting. So that's dirty. Paul, that's dirty. And you said that's not very orky because it didn't clear, didn't clear them as a subject of charge. But oh, they're close. It's a good charge. They were there. Bad guys there in black. See, charge them, hit them with my stuff. What? They're iron hands. No, they're beakies. No, no comment. <laughs> Let's come all the way around here. Um, obviously, I'm worried about intercessors striking first because these guys do have shock assault. So they've got two attacks each plus shock. They've got 31 attacks there with the sergeant. It's many attacks. So I need to smack them with my boys first. So let's do that. There's two with claws. Command what, point. What's that? Reject the flesh, embrace the machine. What, Feel what? no pain for four up now for me. What did what? Feel no pain on four up. What? Feel no pain, four up. Okay. Screw you. <laughs> let's hit them with some power fists. The power fists hit on fours. Oh, no, no, no. And then I reroll one of these because I'm lucky. But it doesn't feel very... Uh, I get two hits. And then I'm strength ten. And I re-roll. Look how unlucky I am. Right, I wound you. <laughs> it's minus three with a power claw, sir. And I do D3 damage. And I can re-roll that because I'm lucky. Right, I do two damage. And I kill one. I kill one. Right, let's do all the big choppers. Three big choppers in this squad. I'm hitting on threes with these. And I hit... Uh, Five times, uh, strength plus two, so strength seven, wounding on threes. And I wound three times, then minus one, two damage. So three, four up, holiest, okay. One fails, and then two damage? Uh, one damage. One damage. Uh, that squad of knob bikers kills one and tickles one. Right, Paul's not paying to interrupt to hit the squad of two, so. You'll pile in a bit, and then there is a claw in this squad. Fours? Yeah, I didn't need my rerolls. And twos? I do need my reroll. <laughs> One six up saves, sir, uh, with a power claw to the face. And you fail it. D3 damage for three six up, feel no pains. A four up, feel no pains. Terribly sorry. On one model. I kill one. And then the big chopper hits once. Wounds once, four up, and saves. Uh, so, what was that? That was 
Seven knob war bikers attacking a squad of intercessors and killing two. Yep. Did I kill two? Yep. I killed two. <laughs> okay, over here to the nobles attacking the Vindicator. Uh, I've left. There's two kill swords in there, Power Fist and the Big Chopper. Let's power start. Claw. Power Claw. Let's start off with the Power Claw. Fours. Rerolling. And straight ten. Rerolling. So two wounds. Two six up saves on your Vindicator, which you failed. Two D3 damage, which I can re-roll because I'm lucky. So five wounds, it's got four left. Even before I smack it with the other stuff, is the Vindicator, it's gone, it's gone. Don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up. Right, there is a stratagem you can use to blow up automatically, but they've got two wounds each and it only does D3 damage, so Paul not doing that. And it doesn't blow up on a six, and I have killed the Vindicator. Then I piled three inches towards the closest enemy unit. You don't have to go in a straight line. I am close to that squad, so I've tucked in there. We are cunning, as well as brutal. Now let's come all the way over here and be even more cunning and pile into some bikes and that rhino. Then I did my attacks. I didn't put any wounds on the bikes and put two wounds on the rhino. And there's the guy with the big chopper. What I really should have done when I was coming up with this cunning plan is attack the bikes with the big chopper because it's a two wound weapon and I potentially could have killed it but instead I've just scratched the hull of that rhino. Then the bikers struck back one attack each because shock assault wasn't a thing because they didn't charge them and you killed a chunk and the rhino killed one too. In fact you've killed four in this squad, one of them in overwatch and three of them in the fight phase. Leadership is seven so uh, even if I fail my morale I'd still be able to tag these units here. It's a good thing. I mean, these shooter boys weren't going to be doing much anyway, and they're about to get countercharged by 10 Space Marines in a Rhino. But at least I've stopped this bike squad from firing for a turn. Meanwhile, we come all the way back here to the Intercessors, which stepped up and are attacking the Nobles. Right, they got 25 attacks coming in because of Shock Assault. Hitting on threes. Oh, mama. 16 hits, but wounding on fives because I'm tough. I'm an Orc. Uh, actually, that's quite bad. Is that just three? Three. Yeah. That's just three. I have a four-up save, but one of them lost a wound earlier. And he dies. And one of them is down to two wounds. And I, I think that's the end of the phase. So this attack went really badly up here. The bag, bike smashing into the Iron Hands because the flesh is weak and they have that four-up save. But at least I've shut these down from shooting. I don't have any morale to take over here. Um, and at the end of the turn, I tore down the Vindicator and the Storm Talon, but that's about it. Over here, tag these units up as well. I'm leadership seven on the shooter boys. Two plus four is six, so they hold. They hold the line. They hold firm for now before the Iron Hands disembark from these vehicles and so sweet murder in amongst the shooter boys. Now, the vast majority of say hi Paul's uh, army is untouched. The Devastators, the Vindicator, sorry, the Predator, the Whirlwind, the Thunderfire, all the Dreadnoughts are untouched. And there still is a unit of First Company Terminators in reserve. Company of uh, Clan Veterans. Clan Veterans in reserve, ready to teleport down onto this battle grid. So this war is a long way from over. Let's go on to Iron Hands, turn two. Here we are after the Iron Hands movement phase and the mechanical beakies in black are pushing forward. What is going on here, Paul? You're pushing past this squad of boys. Yeah, I'm treating them with the contempt they deserve. Um, they, they, they don't figure in my calculations. They're just dead. <laughs> How's that? Because what's, what's, these aren't firing or charging and they fell out of combat, right? The bikes. That's fine, yeah. So well, <coughs> you're gone... opening yourself up to a counter charge from my stuff. From yeah, the that's the idea. Oh. Because... Hitting on fives, multi melt, plasma gun, melter gun, thunder hammer. Right. I'm perfectly happy for either or both of those to come piling in, get shot at, and then get whacked with a thunder hammer. <laughs> if they're still there. Oh. Because that's cannons. Oh, that's cannons and devastators. And yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've heard of them. And we already know you can't get through that gap. No, So yeah, you have to I... come around here and put yourself in line of fire of the predator again for next turn, which I can just fall back from. Okay, so it sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these guys got out of the Rhino, and they bypassed the... Um, yes, the... back to the Orcs, they uh, contempt, the calculations say that they're dead. <laughs> uh, I like what you did here, spending a command point on tactical flexibility. Flexibility, yeah. yeah, so I've left five of them behind on that objective. Yeah. Uh, mostly out of line of sight of anything, so... Yeah. Uh, 
I was a bit worried I might not be able to get back, depending on where they end up going off to, and you might right. do something to them. So, so if you brought the whole ten squad over here, it would have brought them in line of sight and range and things like that. Like so, this way, they're going to rent. And there's a flamer there, right? Yeah, there's a flamer. There's also a flamer here. He might turn around and toast them if there's if necessary. There's all the guys in there that can put fire into them. Failing that, I'll shell them from above. Okay. So, so there's also small arms from. The Devastator unit that's advanced. Okay, so, I'm they're, not worried. so they're very likely dead. They're, and they're dead. Your footprint on this side of the battle grid is significant. The laws of probability will fracture if they aren't dead. <laughs> it might actually end the universe. Your machine mind may break. Meanwhile, no, the fabric about, of reality may unravel. Right. Talking about a strong push round there. Um, there's triple dreadnoughts and your warlord, oh. and the intercessors fell out of combat. You've given him the plus one to hit. And, yeah, there's nastiness happening here as well. Yeah, the intercessors have fallen back. I've left the um, services still. And they can uh, shoot at uh, those boys up there. Okay. So that's fine. Um, I've got... Uh, last kind of, Basically, I've got Dreadnought Fists yes. to kill these. Yes. And some gun and some flamer. There's a plasma. There's a flamer. There's loads of stuff going in there. And then whatever's left can punch. Can't put this gun into the your warlord but I can put the seismic hammer in if I make the charge right so he could get a seismic hammer to the face I think they're flat five damage I think they are he's he's not my warlord but um, he is quite scary oh he's not your warlord either no. way s screw that guy okay and uh, the first company not the first company the, the uh, clan veterans have dropped in here now interestingly you're right on the edge of the battle grid, and that's where they're gonna. Their footprint isn't gonna change very much for the well, rest it, of the. It doesn't really need to, for right? A, for a couple of reasons, right? Well, if it'll take me a turn or so to move them up to here, if I need to give fire support later, and they've actually got some good lines of fire with the cyclone missile launcher. Okay, but that's way, way ahead of the future. Right, they've got to die. Otherwise, they'll pile. They'll come charging forward and tie up my lines again. They could letting, be a problem. Letting these guys get further forward, they which could be a problem. I do not want. Okay. It'll also keep those busy for a while. They'll either teleport off or they'll spend time trying to kill them. Right. They might kill them, but that's fine. Okay. So keeps them busy. Okay. Uh, sounds like to me. There's a crush happening on the left, a crush happening on the right. Maybe not a lot of happening in and, the middle the, for this turn. The but Redemptor has options. He can shoot through there at those boys, depending yeah. on what else has happened elsewhere. Yeah. But that will leave me a chunk in the middle. And then I'll be surrounded on the right and the left flank. If this and, goes to plan. And in the centre. So and in and the, the centre. Psychicness. Shall we go on to psychicness? Because last turn you were out of range. This turn you can psychicness. Yeah, this turn I'm in range, baby. Talking about the psychic phase, I just remembered something. That unit of bikers had war paths on them last turn, but I forgot. That wasn't very lucky. Right, what are we doing? <laughs> Obturation mechanicum. Obturation mechanicum on, on these guys. Okay, water charge value is seven. Seven, yep. Yeah. And that passes, and it basically means that when I roll six, my guns get hot. Your guns get hot. Yeah, you can have that. Yeah, okay. You, you're going to be firing Overwatch, haven't you? Well, I don't think there'll be very many left after you... You're going to shoot some guns into them. Well, I'm going to shoot them and hit them. Are you? Yeah. 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 You can have it. That's fine. Right. There's not any other valid targets for my other power, so it's fine. Smite. And that fails. I was going to try and block Smite. Good, good. Worked out nicely then. <laughs> All right. Opening up the shooting phase, we come over here. This tactical squad, this combat squad that um, split away from his brethren last turn... Fired rounds into this squad of orc boys. Three of them have died. Now we're on to the tactical squad that disembarked from the rhinos and they're splitting fire all over the place. So the flame are back into the boys. Yep. The bolters are firing at the looters. Yes. I've spent a command point so on grot I, I may as well make you spend your command points. Yes. And the missile launcher going into the mech gun. Correct. Okay, let's do the missile launcher first. Threes to hit. And that's a two. You did a winters again. Another winters. Flamer. Okay, flamer. One hit. Guess and it one. wounds sixes. No, one dies, that just leaves the boss knob alive as well. Okay, and then um, mini bolt shots coming into two, looters. Two, seven. Only seven. Yeah. Three hits. One, one. wound. Uh, on a two up, uh, aggression dies. Aggression dies. Then the scouts inside the land speed a storm, open fire. All the shots apart from the heavy bolt are killed the boss knob with the big chopper. So yes, you're right. The machine mind calculated they get wiped out. And they have been wiped out. The heavy bolter from inside the storm 
It's firing at the looters. Minus one to hit because you're moved. Oh no, no. no. Your iron hands. And there's two, two twos again. Two more winters. Yeah, threes. It yeah. wounds. On a two up, a grot dies. Another grot dies. I'll take that one away. Then the guns on the land speed of storm fired out. And this gun, this uh, tractor cannon, is down to one wound left. Heavy bolter slammed into the Gretchen. Along with the bolters from that squad of devastators slammed into the Gretchen. Four of them have died so far. And the rest of the shots from the Devastators, we've got two Grav Cannons with Grav Amps going into the Mech Gun and the two multi motors into the Correct. Dragster. Um, so, where are we starting? Start with Grav. Grav. Four shots each. Hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. And that, the, the, that's just beautiful. These strength five, I'm toughness five. I will not get a save for this. It's got one wound left and you only do one wound. Turn you, you kill the gun. Gun is gone, so so far killing the gun, so far killing that unit there. Now two multi motors coming into the custom booster blaster. And two hits. And one wound. Uh, I have a six up and vulnerable save, which I fail. And it does one damage. What does it mean on rolling ones for damage? And so all this lot here have now fired. And um, casualties mounting up on the orcs. We're now across to the Predator. And it's going to put two last cannons into this dragster. Yep. And two last cannons into the mech gun. Yep. That's your first mistake, sir. No. Focus fire. No? No. No. No, because Chan, I suspect I'll kill one of them and not the other. Right. And then if there's one left, I can finish it off with the dreadnought. Oh. Or one of the big lobbing guns later on. Okay. Oh, yes. Lobbing gun. Thunderfire cannon fired up and over. Loading tremor shells one more time. This unit took a casualty and it's half their move and charge and advance again. So these guys are just getting rained on from the sky from air burst missiles raining around them. Or I don't know, uh, tremor shells. Tremor I think shells. They it makes the ground shake. Ground shake. Ground shake. Okay, so yeah. last cannon. These two. <coughs> yes. Threes to hit. And threes to wound. And one wound. Six up and bun. New D6 damage. Uh, that's a six. Um, you kill it. Does it blow? No. And the mech gun? One hit. Two, Two hits to the vine hands. Threes to wound. I don't get a... Oh. I don't get a save and you don't do any wounds. But you were perfectly right there. It did kill one of the targets and uh, the booster blaster is gone. And so significant gaps are opening up on the orc's right flank here and there is a wave of black about to crash down into them. All the guns around here have fired, except for the Redemptor. And rather than stitch more murder down into the right flank, because it's looking so weak, he's going to fire through the reliquy and into this squad of boys that got tremor shelled. So the heavy assault Gatling cannon of Duke... Oh no, two okay, two fraction watches. Okay. D6 each. Okay. This is the Fragstorm. These are assault though. They are. So threes to hit and fours to wound. Three. And a five up invulnerable save from the shield and six up pain boy. No, three are dead. And now you've got the big Gatling cannon of doom, which is 12 shots hitting on threes, re rolling ones because of iron hands. Nine hits with the re rolls, winning on threes. This would be AP, it is AP Eight. minus two. Minus two. Because yeah. you're still on the Devastator Doctrine. Don't I know am. if I pointed that out. But, uh, I haven't seen the need to change it. No. <laughs> five up custom force field. Oh, that's good. That's good, I saved three. You saved four, there was a six. Was there? You just picked up a six. Pain boy, uh, three die. Three more die. That's it for the brutal firepower on the right flank. We're coming all the way across to the second flank and the Terminators are unloading 20 Stormbot shots into the knobs. And two crack missiles. Nice, <laughs> hitting on threes. And winning on threes. Fours, fours, fours. 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 But fortunately, I have a three up save because I looted something last turn. Don't know if this will help. They have two wounds each, though. These are basically all key intercessors. Yeah. Uh, ah! Two of them died. Two left. Two crack missiles come flying out of the cyclone missile launcher. Re rolling hit rolls of one because it's heavy. And winning on a two. And it's AP minus two. So I need a five. Uh, I failed to save. D6 damage. And that's just perfectly enough. Leaving the boss knob from the nobles stood there saying, come on in at the Terminators. And now we're across to the circle of dreadnoughts uh, surrounding my knobs 
on war bikes here. Apart from them and the whirlwind, this is all that's left to fire. Now the Tech Marine doing his flamer and plasma cutter into the first squad of bikes. Um, plasma cutter? Yes. Hits. Hits. Strength seven. Wounds. Mm. I need a six up and bun, which I fail and it does a wound. One of them is on one wound left. And then the flamer. Let's burn these Xenos. Six auto hits. That's nice. Wounding on fives though. And two get through. I have two four up saves. And you burn one to a crisp. After the Tech Marine unloaded, the uh, Ironclad Ancient Brother number one is firing at the furthest squad of bikes. Here's the Melter hit, which misses. The Melter miss. <laughs> and then 12 shots with the Hurricane Bolters. Threes? Oh dear. Seven hits, five to wound. Uh, nothing. Nothing. The Ironclad did nothing. Nothing. Interesting. Nothing. So Dreadnought number two firing his multi melter Storm Bolter into this squad of two. Multi melter rerolling hit rolls of one, hits. A wound on a three, I am toughness five. It does wound, six up and vulnerable save, are they lucky? Yes, lucky. yes they are, that was, that was lucky. Storm Bolters, uh, three hits. And four hits. Four, one. He's, he's got the thingy of the Oh thingy. yeah, he's sitting on twos, yes. Because of his thing, oh, one wound, four up. We can't save a multi mounter, but I can't save a normal storm bolt around. Maybe it was the blizzard of firepower. And so Iron Father Ferros will fire at this squad. He hits on twos with his special bolter. Strength five, force to wound. And uh, two wounds get through. It is AP minus two, so I need sixes. And I fail them both, and it does two damage a time, so that kills that one and puts one down to one wound left. Ready for the librarian with his plasma pistol to take a shot. It's not spotted. And he hits. And wounds on a three. He wounds. I need a six to keep that last knob biker alive. And he's not that lucky. So that's one squad of bikes wiped out. And now Ancient Raman, the former Iron Captain, will unload into this second squad here. Last cannons first or yeah, heavy flame no, last first? Cannons. Last cannons first. Deuce to hit. And threes to wound. Ooh. His last cannons far over the heads of the bikers. Let's say he didn't miss. He just, they're, they're, you know, it just, it just clipped off the wing. Well, they, they, they hit. He just didn't hit anything that needed, obviously. Yeah, just bits of metal hanging off the side yeah, of his Yeah, I bike. do find it difficult to think there's much of that bike that it didn't need. <laughs> well, they are orcs. They might have all sorts of tin foil and cardboards and spokes, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Heavy Flamer auto hits for one. <laughs> and it doesn't wound. <laughs> I was bigging you up there, fellow, and uh, somehow you missed. Somehow yeah, you missed. sucked. Um, so we have some servitors and a whirlwind, and that's left to fire. Servitors coming at the bikes or downstream here? Honestly, downstream the orcs. Uh, yeah, I don't think you have much to worry about these bikes because they're about Believe to get that. charged by many dreadnoughts. So coming in at these orcs, servitors are hitting on fours because there's a tech marine nearby. Um, they don't get the benefit of the Devastator Doctrine, obviously, because they're not space marines. But they do wound twice. I have five up. Um, uh, invulnerable saves and the six. No, they do kill one. Good fire from the servitor. Now, do you know where you're going with the whirlwind? I do not. So, pretty successful so far. Do we know what we're doing with the whirlwind now, Paul? Yeah, I'm going to throw it to that tractor cannon that stood right and sat in the line of fire of the ironclad. This one here? Yeah. Protecting the dreadnoughts? Yeah. Okay, do two D3 shots with the vengeance launcher for four shots. Hitting on threes, re rolling ones because you're a nine. Ooh. You hit once, strength seven, it wounds. It's minus two because of the Devastator Doctrine, two damage, and it takes two wounds. That could have been worse. I thought it was dead. Ho-hum. Ho-hum. The missiles, big dispersal pattern, fire down from, like rain of rockets and... They, the missiles missed. <laughs> so unit there. of bikes dead which and the second unit are about to get charged at the end of the shooting phase many orc casualties here seven four boys gone the booster blaster gone and gun gone it's lots of things gone the central chunk is still looking relatively strong but we're going to go and do some charges now there's no charges coming around here because the bikes fell out of combat last turn they're just establishing their foothold daring any greenskins to come walk towards them However, there's going to be mini charges coming over here, and those knob bikers are not long for this world. Here we are, partway through the charge phase. We have a dread, dread librarian, your warlord, the tech marine, 
all charging these bikes, and there's only two left out of the three <laughs> because of Obduration Mechanicum. <laughs> he died. He yeah, one of them died. The uh, weapon blew up, being cursed by that uh, librarian there. You did try and charge the Death Killer War Trike as well, yeah. but you didn't get high enough and choosing, choosing not to command point reroll that charge because the Terminators wanted to slay this last foul Xenos noble over here who's bellowing them on with his power claw. Now it's charged, sir. Yep. That's a seven. Right, choosing not to spend a command point on the reroll for the Terminator, so we're now in the fight phase, and this is important, because if you don't kill them in one hit with one of these models, then I have got two power claws there. I may choose to interrupt and smack you back, and there's a librarian without a safe. So um, you're spending a command point on the Gorgon's, Gorgon's Rage. Rage. Select yep. an Iron Hands unit and it's plus one to hit. Yep. And that Dreadnought with Shock Assault's got five attacks. Yep. And it's hitting on twos. Yep. Wounding on twos. Yep. Flat three damage. It will, yeah. He will insta jib these spikes on three wounds left. If he manages to get through. So twos to hit. And you roll two ones. <gasps> Sorry. Right. Twos to wound. Oh. Only two wounds. That would normally kill a normal orc, oh, but I am on. lucky. Hang on, let me think. And on sixes, I will survive, and there will be a power claw ready to tear up that librarian. Command point the one. Okay. <gasps> do you get command point back? Because you haven't had a one back this turn. Yes, yeah, at least you get it back. Okay. So, sixes to keep one of these bikers alive. They both fall. Now, interesting, then we went deeper into the fight phase. He was a charging model, so he then piled in and consolidated to the closest enemy model, as did the Dreadnought. Your Warlord can go six inches in any direction, so he came up here. And the Ironclad selected that as the subject of a charge, my Death Killer Wardrike. So he can now pile in three inches, which leaves him... Within range of my Death Killer War Trike. You can keep your back turned to me, sir. Keep it turned to me. Um, you've got five attacks with Shock Assault, but that weapon that in your fist, that seismic hammer, is minus one to hit. So you're hitting on fours with five attacks, uh, but it does a flat five damage. Wisdom of the Ancients. Wisdom of the Ancients as well? Yeah. Okay then. Fours to hit. <laughs> re wrong the one with Wisdom of the Ancients. <laughs> Okay, so this is strength time, uh, plot times two. Get you up to strength 12. Well, what's his toughness? Six. Tragic. Really tragic. Okay, so they're minus many, five damage. That's 20 damage. <laughs> I need. Sorry, that's, that's, that's not very iron. Yes, that's how we calculated it. How lucky is he? Not that lucky. No, he's not lucky. Fairly lucky, but not that lucky. Only 15 wounds. And the Death Killer Ward Trike gets wiped out. Now, that was a beautiful move there. Moving around, and I liked it. That was good. And uh, this triumvirate of dreadnoughts press their attack. That is the end of the Iron Hands for turn two. I have some morale to do. Um, four Gretchen died, so I'm going to lose one more in the morale phase because they're leadership four. Uh, and I lost seven boys there. Their leadership currently actually how, yeah, how is big seventeen. Them? Yeah, they're fine. So I'm all right. So the Iron Hands have pushed back the attack on the right flank and they've pushed back the attack on the left flank and continue to press their, their steady advance. Let's find out what the Orcs can do in turn two. Right, here we are after the Orcs movement phase in turn two. It's only turn two and that took some time and I'll tell you why. Because large line of sight blocking terrain is a thing and the amount of guns I could put on the vehicles and the heavy stuff around here is restricted. There is a boss knob here with a big chopper that does two damage that could jump on them. Um, and he can't be overwatched right now. After I put two damage weapon in with the custom booster blaster and I move the um, looters. Now they're minus one to, uh, when they shoot stuff AP minus one. They're entirely within cover and 50% skewed so they'll get plus one. But they're two damage guns. So I need to do everything I can to try and strip away these things. You took away my fast stuff, my bikes and my trucks. I need to ha stop these things spinning around all over the place. And let's not forget as well, um, with rapid fire, bolted discipline, storm uh, bikes, they can kill a lot of boys. They can kill a lot of looters. They can kill a lot of boys. So they, they need to die. As for the heavy stuff, 
Well, I've got a mech gun and a mech gun, and that's about it that can fire up town. So I'm probably going to pick on the Predator. If I don't kill it, it's going to get healed. <laughs> probably, yes, probably, yes probably twice. So that's all the firepower I can really force around this side of the battle grid. And up this side of the battle grid, I can shoot that with loads of guns. That ironclad is, stop trying to hit me and hit me. He's got a five up and vulnerable save right now, and he is toughness eight. So actually taking him out with just my mech guns and my shock jump dragsters might be a bit tricky. But I was also trying to line up shots in case it died to fire at that other dreadnought down there. But he's a character so I can't target him so I can't shoot him. <laughs> so that is a brilliant stratagem there. Otherwise I'd be firing at that venerable dreadnought as well. And he hid the other one, not hid the other one, tactically repositioned the other one behind these crates here. He's an ancient brother, he knows what he's doing, he knows how to use the battlefield to his advantage. And then I advanced all this lot in the middle, including the wire banner, including the big mech with a custom force field. This is a 10 inch charge from this swarm of boys, I had to command point reroll their advance. A 10 inch charge to get round in on that warlord over there, and potentially get slay the warlord. Now, if I fail some of these charges, I'm in no doubt that um, I'm going to get counter charge back again. And it's going to be painful, but I need to push forward. This unit advanced as well, but with the tremor shells, with the ground shaking under their feet, they're not going anywhere Yeah, it looks like Yeah. Uh, it's a strategy that I think I need to use. Um, I'm ignoring the Terminators for now. For now. Uh, because there's so many other threats on the table. It's, 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 and Terminators that are a threat with the Cyclone missile launcher, but... I think this guy down here is a blood axe. Yes. Oh yeah, He's that guy there. He's lurking behind that wall, ready to jump. I can see this guy coming forward, the tech marine, spraying his flamer and his plasma gun at the direction where the knobs were. So he's just jumped behind the wall, ready to come busting through it, swinging his uh, big chopper at the wall. He'll come oh, charging he, through. Oh, he's a snippy snippy. He's a snippy snippy guy. Snippy snippy. Is he? Yeah. Punch a power fist through the wall then. Power claw. Power claw. I keep saying power fists. I mean, who uses power the, fists, really? The claw. The claw. Right, we've got psychic stuff. I mustn't forget warpath this time. And I could de jump something, but I'm not de jumping anything this turn. So I am going to smite. And that's a plus three to the cast because of all the boys around me. So he gets a headache one more time for D3 wounds. For three wounds, he's on one wound left. You can try. Oh no, that's a 12, so you can't deny it. And um, now I, he might kill himself. <laughs> you forgot to mention the pain boy healed the one wound upon him oh, yeah. at the end of the movement phase, otherwise he would be dead. Yes. Oh, that's true. And um, I just took three wounds there, which I can heal on sixes. Okay, so he's got two wounds left, and he would do D3 mortal wounds to the ironclad for three, which you can ignore on sixes as well. Okay, I do three wounds on that ironclad. It's softened up nicely. Now let's put Warpath on. See, I could put it on... I could put it on the Big Mac. Let's put it on the Big Mac. How many attacks do they have? No, he's only got three. Let's put it on the swarm of boys. And that's a perils again. <laughs> it's a mob of boys. It will be a swarm of tyranids. I take D3 mortal wounds. He's got two left. He's gonna die unless I roll a six. Because of the pain boy jabbing needles in his arm as his head's about to explode with all this green energy. Weird boy will explode. And when a Psyker dies from a Perils, units around him take damage as he explodes. So Weird Boy Will collapses in a pile of green spewing acidic ectoplasm, and the power he tried to manifest doesn't go off, because he suffered, he was removed as a casualty as per was of the warp. He's disappeared into the warp, don't worry, he'll be back. One of them died, he took a wound, Grugga Jugga took three wounds, he was standing a bit close. It was like a sprinkler as his head went round. <laughs> don't stand too close to a weird boy, that's why other orcs don't like them very much, because this tends to happen quite frequently. Um, yeah, right, let's shoot some guns. Let's kill a Leviathan Dreadnought, it'll make me feel a little... It's an Ironclad. An Ironclad Dreadnought, it'll and make me feel a little bit better. I'll bring it on. Okay, so starting with the Shock Drunk Dragster. Okay, before you do anything... Yes. I am going to spend the command point on Duty Eternal, right. which halves all damage you do to him this turn, this phase. <laughs> Two D3, uh, threes to hit with the attack squid. And I can reroll one dice because I'm lucky. Two hits, it is strength eight. And I can reroll one wound because I'm lucky. Uh, one wound gets through at minus three. Six down, uh, I have a vulnerable save. Oh yeah. 
Because you're close. Yep. Okay. Rocket hits and wounds. Uh, minus two. So five up either way. No, and that does three damage to half to round it up is two, two. right? And yep. too far away from the thing that does that takes that would actually stack because yeah. that's a three inch range right is, yes. and that drops all wounds down by one so it does do two wounds to the guy and yep, he's down to three left three left three left okay see i'm firing these guys first because the the the, the guns can fire further hmm. but this one can see the terminator so let's do this tractor cannon which hits and wounds at minus two so five up save no does d6 damage for one half is one. He's down to two left. Two left. Two left. Okay. I think we worked out that this thing is only firing at that. So let's fire this mech gun at it. D6 shots for two shots. I hit on fours. And it is daka daka daka. So one hit. Strength eight. It wounds at minus three. So five up and vulnerable You've save. You've wounded well. You've wounded very well. New. <laughs> vulnerable save for the win. Okay. Um, this tractor cannon in, which doesn't wound. This gun, uh, the shock jump dragster in, threes to hit. Reroll one because I'm lucky. And fours, reroll one because I'm lucky. Two wounds at minus three. Two more five up and vulnerable saves. Killing a dreadnought should not be this hard. You make one. D6 damage for one damage. It, and you to ignore one. It's on one wound left. Rocket. Misses. Custom shooter from the pain boy missed. Custom shooter from the Big Mac hit twice with Daka and doesn't wound. Grugger Chugger's rocket misses. All of the sluggers maybe? It's got one wound left, right? I'm trying to plink it with small arms. One wounds with the sluggers. I need sixes to hit because I advanced. Look at that. I get five Dakas. Come on boys, you can bring it down with volley of fire. Wow, look at all those sixes. To be fair, that's what my ult did to Mortarion in a previous game. Yeah, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> sixes. Three wounds. Three. Three up saves on that Ironclad Dreadnought or you die to pistol fire. And you make them all. So pretty much everything on the left side of the battle grid that could fire at the Ironclad has fired at the Ironclad. It's a bit like trying to take a Storm Talon out of the sky. Not only is it Iron Hands, but you've got the tactics. I mean, that one, that stratagem is from the Space Marine book. Yep. Space, so, Space Marine one. It's beautiful. So the ones that make Space Marines great also make Iron Hands greater. Greater. Great, greater. Okay. Um, we know the looters are going to go into the bikes, so let's do that now. I'm going to spend the two CP on more Daka because they moved. Um, and they're heavy, so they'd be hitting on sixes, but more Daka always kicks in Can on I a five. Can yes. I Fire something else to the bikes first. Why? Because taking models, I've got three models that haven't got any Gucci kit on them. Yeah. And if I have to take these ones, then yeah. it's fewer than half of the models that are going to be obscured from the point of view of the virus. So my save will go down. Okay, so let's fire. Thanks. Fire that one first. Here's six shots. There's five dice. And I'll reroll one because um, I'll reroll one because I'm lucky. And I need one more dice. And I get five sixes. One more, one more dice. One more. It's so exciting. Here's the six shot. Okay, okay. But look, I've got five Dakers. This might <laughs> this might actually work. This is strength seven. I'm wounding you on threes. Thanks for the suggestion, Paul. I love you a little bit right now. If I kill some threes, and I can reroll one because I'm lucky. Okay, so I've got four wounds through at minus two, but you get a minus one because you are in cover. Four up. Yeah, each of these will kill a bike. I kill one. Oh yeah, six up iron hands. I kill one. I kill one. Okay. The grot blasters from the buggy did nothing. That could have, would have, should have been a little bit, bit better, bit better. Now the looters, the looters will fire in. I have spent a command point on more Dakar. So D three shots each for one shot each. Let's spend another command point for three shots each. That's more like it. Hitting on fives and sixes and causing more hits on fives and sixes with forty five shots. I got. Many hits. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Winning on threes, and I can reroll one because I'm lucky. Eighteen wounds got through. Eighteen four up saves. Three up saves because you're in cover. Each doing two damage. Don't worry, you've got a six up iron hands thingy me jig. So um, threes. That's a lot of fails. That's a lot of fails. Actually, it's only five. So. <laughs> 
Sixes, keep a bike alive. Dead. Dead bike. He's a living bike, second one. Oh, it might not kill him. It will kill him. Yeah. So two dead. Yeah. Three, Three dead. dead. Four dead. Four dead. And it looks like this. The sergeant with the hammer, the melter, and two wounds on the attack bike, actually. That's pretty good. The grots advanced, so they're not firing. These, the, both of these units of grots advanced. Uh, that's everything over here in the looters. The last two things left to fire are this gun and that gun. Um, I'm temp I was going to shoot the predator, but there should be more dead bikes. So I'm tempting to put the... Sh I'm going to put this into them. I'm going to put this into them. Which hits and wounds. So we four. Minus two, yeah. Four up save. New nope. D6 damage. For four damage, four sixes on the bike. On the attack bike. Because morale is a thing, so it's dead. I think I killed five in that squad. You did. But uh, And they shall know no fear, they'll probably be four. okay. Four, you killed four in that squad. Right, last thing the custom mega cannon. Did mm -hmm. I get it right? Yep. It is going to fire at the predator, because you can't see the bikes. Four. Can five shots. I hit them fours, and one Dakar. New, no, just two hits, strength eight. Oh one, man. One wound at minus three. Same for six. And you oh, save. oh my God. The flesh is weak, my friend. Right, that's my shooting phase. I couldn't kill a squad of bikes, I couldn't kill a predator, and I couldn't kill one dreadnought. So now we're gonna charge, and this thing has a murderous amount of firepower. So let's put the boys into it. Okay, only one died to overwatch because I was in range of the custom force field and the pain boy. And we end up here and then the big mech charged in as well. There isn't enough room for the pain boy to get through. The wire banner. The wire banner. So let's now pile in. And we end up here. There'll be four boys that won't fight, but let's start with the boss knob who's got three attacks plus one because of um, Warpath. So I'm hitting on fours. Actually, I'm hitting on threes because of the wire banner, and I can re-roll hit rolls of. Uh, I can re-roll a hit roll. Yeah. So I hit you, finally four times. If I can't do it with guns, I shall do it with my fists. I will wound him on threes. I can re-roll one of them. Right. AP minus three. How many? I can't see. Four. Four. Power claw to the face on your ironclad dreadnought. You might be able to dodge last cannon fire. But this is the Fury of Gork. Four sixes, yeah? Uh, uh, one six. There's one six. 3d3 damage. And I can reroll one of these because I'm lucky. So, how many wounds has he got left? One. One. He's got to make that many six ups. That's seven eight. of them. Is it? Yeah. yeah, that's eight. Can you make eight sixes? Please it, die. It's getting less likely. Yes. Right, he's dead. Finally, I killed something this turn. Don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up. It doesn't blow up, it doesn't blow up. I killed something. Suddenly I'm feeling better about my life choices. And the orcs consolidate closer to the enemy warlord. And uh, Paul. Yes, mate. I forgot some charges. Yeah, I know. There oh, sorry, I've just, yes. The you are right. Of course you may do them. Yes, so of he will jump on the tech marine. And I can reroll one of them. He will jump on the tech marine. I am five inches away from him, right? It's going to need a tape measure. And he's going to try and jump on the bikes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, yes, he, yeah, he'll yeah, be he in. he gets it. Right, he's in. Paul's down to one command point left, even he's, though he's been farming them. I'm over here now. Well, let's start here. I did make it in with the other uh, boss knob. He's got three attacks with his big chopper. He hits on threes. That's all right. That's all right. He will wound on threes because he's strength seven. That's Okay. They're minus one, two damage each. I don't want to alarm you, but if you fail these four up saves, I will finally kill two things. I kill the bike squad. You fail two of them. So uh, two sixes, then two sixes to keep someone alive. Oh dear. Right, kill one. Does that mean the guy with a hammer is left alive? Yep. Well, while we're here, do you want to fight back? Because he's a sergeant with two attacks, plus one for shock assault. Stop. What? Hammer time. Hammer time. Dean, dean, dean. You get an extra attack, because it's shock assault. Yes, indeed. One hit, one wound, six up invulnerable save. Let's find out how lucky he is. Not that lucky. <laughs> All right, flat three damage, smush, he's gone. Would you like to consolidate? I don't think you need to. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> While we're here as well, let's do the morale on them, because you lost six. I lost it. 
Six. Uh, leash of eight, they're fine. Okay. Right, let's come back all the way over here. Yours? Yeah. To my uh, boss knob with a power claw. Yes. Smacking down a tech ring. Yes. I'm hitting you on fours. Yes. I can reroll one because he's very lucky. See, he hits every time. Target acquired. Twos to sit. Well, it's minus three, so you actually get a five up. Because tech marines have a two up. You haven't wounded me yet, mate. Oh, yeah, I need to wound. Yeah, that's the thing as well. Yeah. Rolling to wound. Yeah. You have to do that. Pa apparently so. How about I'll wound you three times? Three times. You fell on saves. Interesting. D3 damage. Four, seven? I want to say seven, but it's hard to count higher than five it's because seven. I can only use that. I have to put the thing down to count. Is it seven? It's seven. Uh, That's what I think they've got four. Yes, Tech Marines only have four wounds left, so that boss knob saves my bacon as well. Basically, I could barely shoot for Toffee in the shooting phase. But when I got into Assault, I could claw some things down. So that's the end of my turn too. The swarm of boys is closing in on his Warlord. But there's some Terminators coming up their rear. And you don't want some Terminators coming up your rear. They don't like it up them. No. And over here, I have wounded. I've hurt the bikes. But that's it. There's still a Tactical Squad, a Devastator Squad, a Predator, a Redemptor. The Scouts inside the Storm. This flank is... Definitely in the hands. It's mine. Yes. <laughs> this belongs to the Astartes. And there's two objectives down here. There's one there and one there. And you have first blood as well. So if you have two objectives at the end of the game and I somehow control two objectives at the end of the game, then you'll win. Then there'll be line breaker and first blood and things like that. But it's still a long way to go. I mean, uh, you could crush and start pushing through in turn three and in turn four. That Redemptor Dreadnought looks like he's going to step through the Reliloquy and start sowing murder very, very soon. So let's go on to Iron Hands, turn three. Here we are after the Iron Hands movement phase. In turn three, the Terminators are closing in on that boss knob, and there is a swarm closing in on this mob of boys here, including the Intercessors, the Veteran Dreadnought, and the Warlord seems to have backed away. But uh, he's smart, he's tactically repositioning there, he is an Astartes, he knows no fear. The Redemptor, however, <laughs> whoa, that's a scary thing, charging through the building. <laughs> that is what we call a beautiful sight. I can imagine the hymns echoing around him from the uh, last survivors inside the Redemptor. The cheers, the, the cheers. adulation. The angels of death are here. Meanwhile, around here... You're just pressing the advantage, really. The rhino's there. The sergeant with his hammer is there. That won't stand much of a chance. And the devastators and the tactical marines are pushing up. So we have a psychic face, sir. Yep. Pointing them in the right direction. Um, what is your librarian casting on? Well, obfuscation of the Omnissiah. Yes. You haven't really got any guns. No, oh, I've got so, lots of sluggers. Yeah. You might as well I'm, smite. I'm going to smite, it's just whether I obfuscate... That one. Because the, the other one that you took... Vehicles either, vehicles. They all seem to have disappeared. Well, they're back here. Yeah. It might come into effect if I jump up there later. Yeah, the fast units are in your deployment. So. Yeah. yeah. So smite away? On a five? Uh, yeah. Okay. That passes. D3. Three uh, boys what die. What's worth doing? Boys die, Venerable Dreadnought now firing, Laz Cannon's come down with the Shock Trump Tractor and the Heavy Flamer into the boss knob here. Are you still in Devastated Junction, sir? Yes, I see no reason to drop out, although a lot of the, I may drop out next turn, a lot of right. the heavy targets are, uh, okay. are disappearing. Okay. But you haven't got that much armour. No. So it's not making a big deal. If I was playing, say, the Death Guard, yeah. it might be a much more difficult choice. Yes. Okay. But I'm not, so it isn't. Two last cannon. Oh, yes. oh, hang on. Uh, his hitting on twos is going on the um, is the big ones. Uh, the intercessors. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then. Last cannon. I've got to start the phase. You see. Yes. Yeah, start shooting phase. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. Shoot me. Shoot me. We're rolling ones. So both hit the shock trump dragster. Wounding on threes. They both wound the shock trump dragster. I need uh, six up and ones. No. Two d six damage. That's a dead dragster, which whoop, whoop. does blow up. Does uh, blow up. Damn it. Right, it's only a three-inch explosion, but it does D3 wounds, and that's got three left. 
So I'm going to command point reroll that. Now it doesn't blow up, it just crumples. Then the flamer and the plasma pistol from the librarian couldn't kill this boss knob. Is he going to get a name for himself? We'll find out. The Terminators, meanwhile, are going to unload 20 storm bolter shots into the boys and two missile launchers coming all the way back into this tractor cannon over here. Let's do the um, tractor cannon thingy, Bob. Two shots with the missile launchers. What? Actually, slight correction. Yes. I'm going to put two of the storm bolters into that boss knob. Okay. Well, let's do the missile launchers into the tractor cannon. See if you take it out. So it's threes to hit. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah. And then let's do the... Did you say two storm bolters? Yeah. So eight shots into him. Yeah. You really want him dead. I'm just playing the numbers. Oh, uh, you only get four hits. Well, yeah, just playing the numbers. Uh, three wounds, though. Three up saves. Yeah, he's dead. No, he's not. He's got three up saves. Oh, yeah, because I loot it. He's still alive. Woohoo! Paul. Yes, mate. You only did two wounds on the dudes. Yeah, I know. Level five up and run. You only killed one. Yeah. You haven't killed much yet, Paul. Yeah, I know. What about I'm, the, I'm due a bad phase. What about the intercessors into the boys? They're not, hitting on twos. Not just yet. No? Not so just yet. What are we going with next? Dreadnought. Yes. Yes. Stormwater into the boys, multi melter into him. Multi melter? Yeah. <laughs> Go on then. Just watch, I'll roll two now. You miss. Oh no, you re roll ones. Re -roll ones. You hit. Two to wind. Yay! No save. Six up invulnerable save. Oh yes, yes, he might be lucky. He's not he's lucky. Not that he's, lucky. He's, he got wiped out. Multi melt to the face is definitely going to kill him. Uh, and then the stun bolter into the boys, and it hits only twice, and wounds once, and one dies. Okay, so we're going to move from this storm of fire to the dreadnought bursting through the reliquary. It's going to put all of its shots into this mob of boys here who haven't been tremor shelled yet. And it looks like this. Six boys die, five boys standing, bellowing at that monstrosity. Now we're coming back around here. The intercessors, you're going to unload them into this swarm of boys, mm -hmm. whittling away my units here. Auxiliary grenade launcher first, being shot from the rifle of a gun. One crack grenade. Ooh. Right. Winning on three. Minus a lot. Six up and bun. No, one five, dies. Five up and bun. Five up and bun. Next to what's his face. Oh yeah, there's a custom boss in there. Okay, and then 14 shots, hitting on twos because of um, your Warlord's trait thing. Yes, indeed. And you're wounding on fours. This is AP minus one, but I do have my five up in vulnerable save because of the custom force field. How many wounds? Six. Six wounds. Six five ups. And four more die. There are four left. Now the Acerbiters with the heavy bolters. Fours to hit because there is a tech marine nearby and threes to wound. Gotta be within six, so you're fine. Three wounds, sixes, five, sorry, two more die. Two left. Now I am at Father Ferros is firing his big heavy bolter at them, twos to hit. Rerolling the ones. And threes to wound. At AP minus two to damage. Five up and vulnerable saves. This will kill the boss knob. Because uh, he's got indeed. two. Yeah. Fives. Yep. That squad are wiped out. What was that, Paul? But sadly, I've got no more gun left that I can shoot at your mech with. That's what I was trying to contrive, was to get those out of the way and then get some fire into him. Uh, so in the end, that 5-up custom force field actually saved, saved him. him, strangely yeah. enough. That's all the firepower from this side of the battle grid. That was pretty good. I mean, you whittled away an entire squad of boys and you w uh, wiped out a shock drum dragster. You could have killed that uh, tractor cannon as well, but did yeah. not. Terminator sucked. Yeah, Terminator sucked, strangely enough. Maybe the heads are still ringing from the warp. Six died in this squad. Meanwhile, we have a blizzard of firepower about to erupt on the right flank. And when the smoke clears, shots from the biker, from the rhino, from the uh, loudspeaker storm and the guys inside and all of these and the predator... You've killed the tractor cannon and put this down to two wounds left. Mm -hmm. And some really crappy damage rolls. This one's still on four wounds left. And he killed a chunk of um, grots that were in front of the looters. So there's only three left and they'll auto fail morale and run away screaming. And so basically the firepower over here wasn't, wasn't great. And then you asked me a question about grot shields. Because you said um, do they, have to, they have to be in front of the looters. And the Whirlwind and the Thunderfire Cannon haven't fired. <laughs> so they can fire up and over and target the looters. 
Um, Grot Shields is in effect. I think from the Thunderfire, they have to be six inches and closer. I think I'm going to lose a couple to at least the Thunderfire. But yeah. the rest is going to hit them. So you might as well just aim at the looters anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm going to fire the... Um... Well, the difference is wounding on twos or threes against the Grots. Yeah. Anyway, I found the, thunder, the whirlwind first. Right, are you going to target the looters or yes. target the... You ta okay. 2d3. No, um, Thunderfire's 4d3. What, did I say Thunderfire? Yes. You I meant, meant the whirlwind and I okay. rolled the yeah. number of dice for the whirlwind. Yes. Five shots, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Nice. And wounding on threes. Um, four wounds. Yeah, minus two. Yeah, six Wind. up in buns. Um... I lose four looters. So I took these away because the shots with the thunder fire because I did spend a command point on grot shields which is why I've lost a chunk. It's definitely going to hit the grots. They are closer to the thunder fire than the looters. Okay, so, so 43. Yes, but these are coming in at the looters anyway. Yeah. Um, so after those last three little Gretchen die, you will be killing. So uh, threes to hit and threes to wound. At minus two. At minus two. So uh, on twos, Gretchen die. There's three left. So basically, the last three die. And then these need sixes. Um, that's cocked. That's a six. Okay, one more dice. So I've lost five looters in the end and an entire unit of screen here. There are a few things that haven't fired, but they don't have line of sight or range or anything. So meanwhile, on this side of the battle grid at the end of the shooting phase, there's this buggy left on just two wounds. It's about to take a hammer to the face, which does a minimum three damage. Mm. And um, some Lutus and some Gretchen holding this flank. And then over here, not a lot of bodies left, but it's about jumping on these objectives at the end of the game. So I'm saying there's a chance for the Greenskins as we go into the charge phase. Starting down here, we are charging this thing, and I have six shots, and I hit on sixes. And daka daka daka. And the reason why I'm doing this on camera is because it does two damage. Mm. And I can re-roll a wound. It wounds. And I can re-roll a hit, actually, which misses. So I do do one wound. Uh, minus two. If you make a... Oh, you make the save. I make the save. He goes charging in. And so the sergeant with the hammer engages the buggy. Now we're coming all the way over to this side of the battle grid. Where are you charging, Paul? What are you doing? I'm not. What? 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 Well, the only one who can realistically engage something yes. is Intercessors. The Dread, it's too long. This Dread, I'm not bothered about them. And that would just be going into the Lion's Den. Anyone I... He's got a two-up save. The Intercessors yeah. will just plink off him yeah. and then get countercharged with loads of Power Fists. Right. So we're going to stay here by this objective, hunkered down, hold the objective and take whatever comes to us. And Interesting. And if we need to, we'll hit them from the side with Terminators. Okay. There's enough, there's enough stuff there to... To hold out, you charge me. Enough stuff. Enough stuff. That's your northern coming out there. <laughs> I like it. No, that's that's not my northern. What about the redemptor charging through the middle here? No, that'll get me closer to Gruber Sugar. I'd rather you either charge me yes. or you just run away. I like it. Okay, so we're going to do hammer time here with the bike Yep. on this thing. You're hitting on fours with three attacks with Shock Assault. Two hits. You're wounding on threes. One wound, I need a six up invulnerable save. How lucky is this driver? Not that lucky. He dies and doesn't blow up. The sergeant consolidates into the ruin and this flank is well and truly collapsed for the orcs, or rather, it is well and truly under the control of the Iron Tenth. So let's go into orcs turn. Oh no, morale. Morale is a thing. I lost six guys here. Uh, their leadership seven. And I lost five looters. And I've got four command points left. I've got enough looters to take it, so... <gasps> I, think I, I think I need to command point that. Otherwise I lose four more. But what are they really doing? Yeah, let's command point it. My gut says command point it. Yay! So they actually hold firm. Put me down to three command points left. Then I lost six in this squad here. And six plus two is eight. One more goes running. Grugger Chugger will potentially do D3 wounds on the unit, breaking heads one minute. I want to not do D3 wounds. I want to see it. I want to read the rule because I'm happy to lose one boy. I'm not happy for him to do D3 multiple wounds to the uh. unit. 
Breaking heads. If a clan unit fails a morale test whilst within three inches of a friendly clan, a war boss, the war boss can restore order with a brutal. So it doesn't say I must, it says I can, so I'm not going to. He just watches him run away and goes, yep, fair enough. You did get shot at by a dreadnought. All right, mate, I'll see you back at the pub. That is the end of the Iron Tents turn three. Let's go on to Orcs turn three. Here we are after the Orcs movement phase in turn three, and I've given up the flank on the right. The Iron Tenth definitely have command of these two objectives here. They came in hard, they came in fast, well, hang on, hang and on. completely what? You say you've given it up. Yes. It's not like you've backed off and let me have it. No, you can have that You're one. You're all dead. No, I'll let you have that one. You're dead. <laughs> i murdered you. All what you're deciding to do is, is to not try and retake it. Yeah, well, no, you can have that one. That's From my point of view, I've the green tide is not going to come that way because um, I've decided not to try and retake it. <laughs> so you've got two objectives in first blood. So I need two objectives. I have to guarantee two objectives. So the looters are lining up shots into the intercessors because they're a problem with two wounds each and bolted discipline. I need to kill them. And looters do two damage each. They have two wounds each. So some good firepower into the intercessors will help. But there's a dreadnought there. So the dreadnought must fall as well. So I've got... Double charging coming in with my mech boy and my wire banner. He's got a fist, the guy with the wire banner. So he can um, jump on that dreadnought. Or if I kill the dreadnought in the shooting phase, I could jump on your warlord. Because not only do I need two objectives, you've got first blood as well. I need warlord or something else. So there's also mech guns. These mech guns are lining up that dread. Because let's face it, that dread's got a five up invulnerable save. He's an iron hand. He's tough. We saw what happened to try to shoot dreadnoughts last turn. Um, there's a couple of guns, the shock jump dragster and these tractor cannons lining up the Redemptor in the middle of the pass. Another Dreadnought, that one's got to die as well. And then the Terminators are a problem. So unstoppable green tide. My last three command points have been played. The four Orc boys that were there, they've been tremor shell, tremor shell, tre so they've ran off. And then you recycle a unit back up to full strength and that's a squad of 30. They want to get more lads. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, I need, I need a lot of dominoes need to fall all at the same time here. I need the Terminators dead, I need the Intercessors dead, I need Dreadnoughts dead, or at least I need to start putting pressure and take control of this flank. And then it will be game on. Weird Boy Will has taken a, a quick holiday in the warp, so um, we're moving past the psychic phase, going to the looters, <laughs> firing at the Intercessors, number of shots each, <gasps> three each. 10 looters, 3 shots each, 30 shots, daka 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 daka. Say hi Paul. That was orc shooting, look at it. I can reroll one because I'm lucky. <laughs> How many sixes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is that 8? That can't be 8. That is 8. That's 8 more shots with daka 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 daka. Paul, come back to me. Come back to me. 8 more shots. The looters... 21 hits! It's incredible. Three to wound. And I can reroll one of these because I'm lucky. Wounding not so good. Ten wounds, Paul. You did a lot of um and an in there. What was going on in your brain? I was thinking whether or not to use the stratagem to get my fill no pain from a six up to a four up. Right. Uh, but I checked the card and you have to do it when they're declared as a target for a, an, uh, an attack. Okay. And... I could have only done one shot each there. So it might not have been many. No, no. The thing is... Yeah, that, that's the thing. There are other things I want to use it for. Okay. And because I can't guarantee farming it back, because let's face it, I haven't farmed any of this back. <laughs> uh, I'll, I think uh, you farm back one. One. So I'm, I'm neutral on the cost of that. All right, fours up. Four from there. There. Fours to save. Uh, I kill. That's not bad. I kill four. Yeah, I've got. Do you want a page to take first? Oh, yes. I don't kill four. <laughs> right, first one. Yes. Dies. Second one. Dies. Third one dies. Fourth one. You I, kill four. I kill four. They're a problem. Terminators are a problem. I've got sluggers. I need fives. Uh, three hits and reroll one because I'm lucky. And a daka. I get four hits. Uh, can Terminator plate uh, withstand the slugger firepower? I can reroll sure. one of them. Two wounds. Snake eyes, please. I, I wing a Terminator, I clip him in the leg, it's but a flesh wound. I'll, I'll put it on the Cyclone Missile Launcher for you. No, you won't. Oh, there, Paul, he's on, on that one now. No. Yeah, but the dice is there now. I think it's a rule that... What? Okay. 
Right, um, coming across here, let's do some stuff at the dread. Right, the this thing. It moved, right. it's a heavy, but it auto hits. What? I'm going to fight your dread. Duty Eternal. What's on the that? Dread. Half, half the half damage. damage. Okay, okay, let's hit him. I hit him, that's the wound. Minus two. Minus two, I want to see sir. if I found my command point back. I do! So you've got your command point Boom. still. Now you need to roll a five again to make the save, sir. All right, okay. No. Uh, no. D6 damage, which becomes one. It's which halved. Is I still, I felt it. I tickle him. Right, he's got 12 left. 12. Yeah. And I've got this gun, which can only see him because I lined him up. Mind you, I could fire through that doorway at an intercessor. Or fire at him with duty eternal. I need to slow him up. But this, where's that one firing? Oh, it's firing at the dread. Hmm. Can he fire an intercessor? No, he can't. Hmm. <laughs> Let's fire this one at an intercessor because only four of them died so far and I want more to die. Which hits and wounds. It's minus two. You need a five up save. Yeah. Okay. So the custom mega cannon will fire at the dreadnought, the other dreadnought. D6 shots for six ah! shots. Hitting on fours. Uh, and ones do mortal wounds to myself. So it's down to four wounds left, but I get dackers. Gretchen do get dacker. Three hits at strength eight. Two wounds. Two five up and buns, because your warlord does that. Yeah, you make one. D6 damage. For four. Minus one because he's in range of the iron stone. For three. Because <laughs> of the iron stone. Sixes? Oh, For three. I Still am, do three. I am due to pass some of those. Let's fire the next one in. It's on five wounds left. Number of shots. For five. The first one did six. This one did five. Finally, am I going to have a good shooting face? Fours to hit. No dackers, but I don't get hot. Threes to wound. Okay, only one wound. <laughs> Uh, five up. No, D six damage, which is six. Which is He's five. got five left, which is five left. He's that's the number of wounds he has left. You need to make all of these sixes. You make none of them. Dreadnoughts do blow. You you got a command point for a five up run? No, dreadnought does not blow up. I managed. See, after the first turn, and the second turn of shooting at dreadnoughts, I thought I'll never take out a dreadnought in the shooting phase. But in the end, I took him down. He went down to Chinatown. He went down screaming like, oh, my metal lion body, oh, the flesh is weak. Oh, he shot me in the flesh. Oh. I was happier about that than a person has any right to be. Terribly sorry. <laughs> right, the uh, <laughs> shock jump dragster is, did I fire that? Yeah, it hasn't fired. It's firing at the Redemptor Dreadnought with its targeting squig. And I can reroll a hit roll of one because ones do wounds to myself. It hits, it is strength eight. It wounds. And you don't make the save. It does d6 damage, which is halved for two damage. Okay, so it's down to 10 left, and then the rocket. And I haven't rerolled the hit one yet. Hits, which is daka daka daka. Once, third day. Wounds, minus two. And that does three damage, which becomes two damage. Two more wounds. It's down to eight left. And then Grugga Chugga aims his rocket launcher. And he's going to thread the needle and he rerolls because he's lucky and instead it impacts on the surface. It doesn't go in. I found a gun. I've got a custom uh, custom shooter on the Nobu War Banner. I'm going to shoot the servitors and I'm going to miss the servitors. Right, that's the end of my shooting phase. I killed a dreadnought this time. I'm quite happy about that. Now we're going to charge. We're going to do some charging. I'm going to start off with my big, big mech and he's going to charge your warlord who can't see him right now. He's going to come running around the building going booga booga booga. Let's see how far he can go. Uh, no, let's re-roll the one. Ten? He does. The big mech gets in. Nice. Now the, the, the knob with the banner. I'm getting excited, Paul. I'm getting, this is an eight inch. This is an eight inch with the banner. Oh, he's in as well. In the meantime, the last charge I need to perform, with no command points left, is a 9-inch charge on some Terminators. I'll withstand the Overwatch in a second, because there's 20 shots coming in. But this is a 9-inch charge. Mind you, what do any command points for reroll? I'm an Orc. I've got, here we go. So I can reroll any one of the dice. And they're in as well! Three perfect charges. It's like Gork, or possibly Mork, wanted it. 
And so they come crashing forward. This is where I end up after piling in. I lost five to Overwatch. There's 25 guys left alive. Now, Orcs have two attacks. Slugger Chopper's three attacks. Plus one because the squad is larger than 20. Four attacks on 24 boys because one of them has a claw. Five of them couldn't fight. I did many wounds. We're doing the claw in a second, but many wounds. Many, many two-up saves, sir. Bucket full of, bucket full of two-up saves. Uh, two-up saves. Top saves, Paul. You'll be fine. Okay. You'll be fine. Trust in the Mechanicum. Yes. Uh, there's a few ones. And then you get sixes on that because of your Iron Hands thingamajig. Yeah, that's yes. Uh, so that's two because one was on one wound. I killed two with normal boys with huge number of attacks. Then the claw will hit you. Boss knobs have three attacks plus one because there's loads of boys. Three left. There's three left to dig through. I haven't done any of my rerolls yet. Nope. Four's to hit. Now I can reroll one of them. Okay, two hits. And two's to wound. Two wounds. Crux Terminator save, sir. Uh, okay, two get through. Two one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. One. Which I can re-roll because I'm lucky. Two. Two, two sixes. No. Nope. One's dead. And the other one? Two more. <sighs> one stands firm with one wound left. And the Sarge? The Cyclo Missile Launcher? Are you going to put the one dice on the Cyclo Missile Launcher yeah. guy? I tried to do that earlier, but someone stopped me. Then we consolidated. I don't want you breaking out of combat. We can do the attacks back. We'll go to that one in a second. But while we're here, we can do the attack back. If you want to. All right, if you like. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Power sword. Yes. Hits twice. Wounds. Um. Power fist. Hits once. Wounds. Six up and one. You killed one. So you killed six in total. But uh, my leadership currently is 24, so I will hold. You won't have to take him a leadership there. Now we're going to go across here to my big neck. And my knob with war banner facing down the warlord, and they both have power claws. Mm -hmm. So this is the big mech. It's here. Engaged. Oh yeah, because you heroically intervened. Well, it has to be on your warlord. I declared your warlord, and your right. librarian heroically intervened, right? Yep. Yes. So um, big mech versus uh, your warlord. I would be hitting on fours, but I'm hitting on threes because there's a knob with a banner. Mm -hmm. So threes, and I can reroll one of them because he's lucky. You are toughness five. I think so. I'm strength ten. I can reroll one of them because I'm lucky. Two wounds. Two five up and vulnerable saves. Let's see if he can stand firm. He takes one hit. D3 damage. So two. And he ignores the wounds on fives. He's like he's disgusting and resilient. So he only drops one wound. Yep. Because he's disgustingly resilient. Power fist from the knob with banner. And I can reroll one of that. Oh no, I hit no. them all three times. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, what? No. I, that? Oh, I hit yeah. on threes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Twos. I wound three times. That's a potential of nine wounds there. Five up and bun. <gasps> he failed them all. He's taken one wound so far. I think he has seven. So three d three damage. That. Are you going to reroll one of them? Hmm. Right, he's got six wounds left, and that's seven damage. <laughs> Do you want to gamble on getting eight? And I could get eight. Or and you could go down to six. Yeah. Or I could go down to six, and you make a five up and fun. No, nope, I'm going to let the... I'm gonna, it would be foolish to re-roll one of those, wouldn't it? That would be foolish. That would be silly. Okay. Keep it as seven wounds. All right. Okay. One at a time. Okay. What Fail. Fail. Pass. Fail. Fail. Pass. He's going to live. He's going to live. He lives. Oh, one wound. So the Iron Father steps forward. He's going to direct all of his attacks against the mech. Yeah? Yep. Okay. So how many attacks with Shock Assault? Five, uh, six? Six. Okay. Hitting on? Threes. Threes, because he's still a tech marine. Okay. So four hits get through. Strength? Seven with Harrow Hand. Okay. Winning on threes. Uh, he wounds three times. AP minus two. AP minus two. Mm -hmm. Only two. Only two. I have a two. So how much damage does this do? Two. Does it? It's not gonna do it. 
Um, fours, because I have a tip save normally. And it takes two wounds. It's on three left. He doesn't do it. But you got the servo arm, which strikes an additional attack. No, it doesn't. Why? No, you can use the servo arm to make no more than one attack with oh. your attacks. Okay. So um, that leaves the knob banner and the other dude left alive. This is on three wounds left. You heroically intervened with your librarian. Yep. Where's he directing his attacks? I can't. I'm not within an inch of the... Uh... Mech. Mech, so I okay. can't go against the mech. It's got to be against the knob. Okay. But I can't remember his stats. I'll be right back. So Librarian's hit on twos, I think. I don't know how many attacks he's got. Right, the Libby's got four attacks with shock. So he's hitting on threes with a force axe. Three. Three hits. And he's winning on threes with a force axe. Two, Two wounds. And it's AP minus one. Knob with war banner has a four up save, which becomes a five up. Minus two of force axe. Is it? Yep. Um... In that case, I failed them both. And it does D3 damage at a time, killing five. the knob. It kills him. Now that's the end of turn three for the orcs. I almost killed the Iron Hands Warlord, but he absolutely refuses to die. He's made of stern stuff. He's got one wound left, and I'm sure that big mech will fall next turn. Meanwhile, the Terminators over here are surrounded. I'm beginning to make my presence felt on this side of the battle grid. We're about to go into turn you know, four for the Iron Tents. I'm really regretting. But you can push back this way quite well. I'm really regretting forgetting to bring a teleport homer model with me. Because if I'd done uh, that, I'd have put it dead centre yeah. and I could zip the Terminators out yeah. and then shoot them. I've done that once or twice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, let's see if the Iron Warriors, Iron Hands, Iron Tank, there's so much Iron Within, Iron Without. No, not those guys. It's not those dudes. <laughs> Screw them. <laughs> Let's go on to Iron Hands turn four. And here we are after the Iron Hands movement phase. Rhino moving around here, popping smoke and healing a wound back up to five wounds. And the Hero Sergeant with his Thunder Hammers come along here. And it's going to be hammer time on that mech gun. And there is the Land Speeder Storm as well. I imagine. There's going to be a lot of firepower coming into these Gretchen and the uh, looters. And if they're not dead, the storm can just charge them and shut them down and stop them shooting. Um, and just slam into them. There's the Predator. Paul's sighing there because he doesn't want to charge looters with a land speed of storm. What are you sighing about? It's a tactical decision. It's a game mechanic, not what the land speed of storm would do. Therefore, I shall not do it. But it's right ramming speed into some looters. Like ram them. With a light skimmer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you iron up uh, the, the, the thunder fire and the whirlwind stage. So the Predators iron up the um, custom, uh, the shock jump dragster, right? Yep. And this dreadnought came charging through the gap and is back up to nine wounds. Doesn't really matter even if it gets down to four wounds or something. He's still at full profile because he's an iron hand for shooting and attacking and everything. I think the plan is to try and kill... Stop me if I'm wrong here. Kill the shock jump dragster, kill all of this stuff, and then charge and kill Grugger Chugger? No, shoot and kill Grugger Chugger. Uh, death by firing squad? Yes. How are you going to kill this custom, this big gun here, this mech gun? What's well, the I don't gonna... need to kill that mech gun just yet. There's a missile launcher at the back there that's going to have a pop at it. Right. There's a last cannon here that'll potentially have a pop at it. So okay. Last cannon. Have you fallen out of combat with my big mech? Yes. Why have you fallen out of combat with well, my big abandoning mech? Abandoning that objective. It just doesn't... There, screw them. The Terminators. They're, yeah, they are overwhelmed, and staying there will uh, uh, risk being overwhelmed on this objective next turn. Okay. So they will be withdrawn, and they uh, may survive. That's on down on that's on them. It looks like to me that you're withdrawing from this uh, flank of the battlefield and preparing to unleash hell on the remaining Greenskins. I'm going to shoot you off the remaining objectives. Kill your general. Line break and be otherwise efficient. <laughs> Let's go to the shooting phase. Psychic phase, we're doing a psychic phase, yes, which please. there's a smiting. I'm smitten, D3 mortal wounds on the mech. He's on two wounds left. Now we're gonna shoot some guns. Right, four last cannons from the Predator into the shock jump dragster, hitting on threes. Even though it moved. Be rolling ones. Oh, everything hit. Wounding on threes. Uh, two wounds, two five up and vulnerable, uh, six up and vulnerable saves, what I'm talking about. I failed them both. It's got seven wounds left, and now it's dead. And no command points in case it goes boom. It doesn't go boom. Now, it turns out that Grogachugger is the closest thing to that Redemptor Dreadnought. 
So uh, the Redemptive Dreadnought is going to fire all its guns into my war boss. Grugger Chugger. Death by firing squad. Uh, what are we doing first? We'll do the assault launchers first. Okay. 2d6. Ten Good time for shot. 10. 10 shots. Threes to hit. And fives to wound, because this is strength four, and I'm made of tough stuff. Thick, orky hide. Uh, three. That's three. Four up saves. He's down to three wounds left. And now the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon spools up. And no ones to re-roll, but, but I'll live with that. ten hits. You're wounding on four, strength four, five versus toughness five. And... The Devastator Doctrine is still in effect, right? Yep. Minus two. In turn four, the Devastator Doctrine is still in effect. I found no need to switch. <laughs> AP minus two. Yep. Five wounds. He's got a six up save. Yep. He's got three wounds left. Yep. I need to make three sixes. I don't make three sixes. That is Slay the Warlord. We will see him again. The Pain Boy will scrape up bits of him off the floor, <laughs> stitch him back together again. Okay. <laughs> We're onto the venerable dreadnought, heavy dreadnought, heavy, heavy flamer into the mech. Twin las cannon coming down into this gun here. What are we doing? This last cannon. Twin las. Two's to hit, re-rolling ones because you're an iron hand, and three's to wound. And one. One wound. Um, I don't get a save. Uh, that's the end of the mech gun. Mech gun down. We have a mech gun down, and D6 auto hits into the mech for one, which means flamer's have been terrible. Three. Save you minus two. I fail to save. The mech's down to one wound left? Plasma pistol. From the librarian. Yeah, hits. hits. Wounds, Wounds, I need a five. He gets taken out as well. After the big mech fell, then the intercessors fired their bolt rifles and the servitors behind fired their heavy bolters all the way down at the looters, killing six of them. I don't have any grot shields and it just burns straight through the armor. Six up in vulnerable save, not standing good enough. Not good enough. So uh, where are we going? You're doing what? There's melters coming into Devastators, this. Devastators, two heavy melters, uh, multi melters into that, and the rest the of the grav into them, the right. bolters into the grots. Okay, the melters. We roll because the devastator two, two hits. hits, one wound. Uh, yep. No one. We roll in that because it was just yeah. one wound. One wound. Uh, no save. D6 damage. Um, within double tap range. Oh, okay. Okay, Five. that's another mech gun down. <laughs> And then the grav into the looters, there's four shots each, so that's eight grav cannon shots into the looters, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, because of iron hands, and wounding on threes, AP minus three, but I need my six up saves. Uh, there's only two looters left now, and then we're going to do rapid fire bolters at point blank range into Gretchen. Then it looks like this, and uh, now the tactical squad in behind, a flamer and bolters into the four remaining Gretchen, and then there's a missile hitting the looters, and then we've got another missile from over there smashing into the looters. Let's do the missiles first, even though they're two separate squads, and they both miss. Oh no, they just remember shots, fragmentation. Hit. Oh yeah, fragmentation. Force to hit, re-rolling ones, and force to wound. Minus one. Minus one. Another looter dies, there's one looter left. I have no command points, they will fail their morale and run away. There's nothing I can do They're about that. They're not going to run away. These guys are going to murder them. Well, we need to do the rapid fire bolters into the Gretchen. I'd like to tell you a happy story about how four Gretchen withstood all of those bolter fires and flamer fires wounding on two. There's no happy story here if you're an orc fan. They got burned and died. Yeah, yeah, like that, because that's the noise. Gretchen make when they're on fire. And then the land speed of storm pumped all of its rounds along with the, the looters are dead. Basically, there's, you've killed, it's completely efficiently um, iron hand of you. Everything on this side of the battle grid is dead. And the thunder fire has yet to speak. And the whirlwind has yet to speak. And all I've got left is some orcs in close combat over here, a pain boy and a shock attack gun. Not shock attack gun, I mean tractor cannon. So the whirlwind's coming down on this one. They can't fire at the pain boy because nearer. Um, so the whirlwind hitting this one. Five shots, five shots. Threes to hit, re-rolling the ones. And threes to wound at AP minus two. But I am in cover. And I take two damage. It's on three left. And now the thunder fire's gonna rain into it as well. And he dies. And uh, you said, what now? Well, it's, I've got to be effective and efficient. Right. I'll spend my last command point on suppression fire and uh, 
shoot the other gun again. <laughs> do you get your command point back? Yes, you do. <laughs> 2d3 shots into the tractor cannon. That's four shots hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Oh, only one hits. And it wounds. And I don't get a save. It takes two damage. It's on four left. That's the end of the shooting phase. i got two models over here. Um, let's fight. This will make me feel better. Terminators and boys banging against each other. And a couple more boys get dragged down screaming, but at least they take the Terminators with them. And that is the end of the Iron Hand's turn four. It's only turn four. And with this unit left, and with this unit left, and with the Iron Hands in firm control of two objectives over here, and First Blood, and Slay the Warlord, and currently Linebreaker, there is no way back for the Orc Boys, for Murphy's War, so this is the way the world ends. The civilians singing hymns in that reliquy prayed for deliverance, they prayed for a saviour, and the saviour came from the skies, angels of death dressed in black, and that was an impressive turn of firepower, that was an impressive uh, display of cold hard logic by the Iron Tenth. I thought I had you, I thought I could have taken it back over here, but I guess I underestimated the amount of stuff that was still coming at me <laughs> from the right flank. And um, losing Weird Boy Will was a, was a blow as well. Because then I could have the jumped something. I could have put more pressure in. I always was keeping the three command points in my hand for Endless Green Tide. And having that come in along with some of the jumping units. We well, see, from a narrative point of view, the thing with Weird Boys, the difference between a Weird Boy and a Warped. Yes. A Warped is mental. Yes. The warped wants all the warp rush, all the warp power. They get as close as they possibly can to as many boys as they can because they get off on it. <laughs> and, and they often explode. Uh, yeah. Like when you used to have miners with them, yeah. the warped's miners would be holding them back. Yeah. And if you, if the miners died, they ran off towards the nearest, biggest concentration of boys. <laughs> now, Do you remember they used to be in a, a tower as well and they kept them locked in the tower in the apocalypse games and didn't let them out? Maybe, yes. But the weird boys yes. suffer incredible pain. They aren't mental. So we'll make the warp heads are mental. The warp heads are mental, but the weird boys, the reason they have minders is to drag them to the fight. Right. So it's perfectly in character to have a weird boy that just kicks about on the back line away from all the boys. Yeah. So when you happen to endless green tide, yeah. he goes, oh, Jesus, get away from me to jump. <laughs> and then... So you bring them on and then to jump them wherever you want them. Nice. That's, that's, that's perfectly legitimate from a narrative perspective. Weird Boy Will has been Warp Head Will for like the last four or five games though. Yeah, he, but he's got, really getting off on it now. You <laughs> come with the Weird Boys. He's loving it. Well, as Was well as Weird 40, Boy... 40, 50 points are they? 62 I think or something. Uh, as well as Weird Boy Will, I have Weird Boy I Am. And I've said about that the better. Yeah. And Grugger Chugger. Nice. And, of course, Murphy, who sadly wasn't with us today. He couldn't join us today. He was back home having tea, eating some Gretchen, you know, tasty snacks. So, um, Iron Hands, you've been playing them forever. I've been playing them for a long time as well. And for a long time, they just had that six up, feel no pain. And they lacked the flavour of other Space Marines because they, oh, they couldn't reach the, other, the parts that other Space Marines could. But now, all of a sudden... We have some lovely stratagems. And I'll tell you what, from my point of view, charging you and having you hit me with orc shooting on a five, that was painful. <laughs> and the fact that I can get it up to four. Yeah, that was very painful. And that I can get the feel no pain up to four. But you know what? I don't think that had that much effect. The The other thing, I know there's been a lot of talk on the interwebs. Yes. About, oh, all the healing and you can get ten wounds back in a turn and so on. I only put one wound back on. Yeah, but... You, you didn't injure... That that part of the army didn't yes. come into play. I had a bunch of tech marines that didn't do anything. Yes. What really came into play was the fact that I could move the vehicles around and still be pretty accurate with the shooting. Yes, but you're you and you're playing the narrative and all that sort of stuff. Um, on the interwebs, if you're building a really strong castle, you'd probably have, I think, these things like 60 or 80 points. Yeah. And hitting on three is re-rolling ones. Well, you could have three of them. Three predators in front. You can give everyone a five up and vulnerable save. Everyone minus one damage. And re-rolling the hit rolls. And re-rolling the wound once. And some scout screen in front. You can do all of that for about seven, eight hundred oh, points. don't say scout screen. It and you can move... Makes my teeth itch. And you can move them round so it's not a static castle. 
And then you have the Storm Talons doing what Storm Talons do. What well, is that? And you've still got many, many, many points left over. The amount of because that can be the amount of DACA that that can throw down and well, the resilience of it. Yes, in yes. Cloud sorry, Cargill. Yes. This 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 chap here. Yes. Um, on an ancient ramen yes. who used to be the Iron Captain. When he was the Iron Captain, yeah. he spent a lot of his time hunting down and acquiring as many tanks as he possibly could. Right, okay. So from the little I've read in the new book, mm. from the narrative perspective, Clan Cargill has um, double the amount of predators, whirlwinds and hunters of any of the other clan companies. Nice. And so, that probably means double the amount of, well, quadruple the amount of any other chapter. <laughs> so... As I expand the army and lean into that element of the narrative a bit, I will have more whirlwinds. I will have. I'll get some hunters. I'll have more predators. Um, and they do what's tactically necessary. Having some stuff in the backfield going do 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 and keeping it protected is a perfectly iron handy thing to do. I recently played a city fight game. Yes. And I concluded that the re- this is before the codex change. Yes. But realistically speaking, there's no way I could manoeuvre all my tanks in the city. Okay. And the lines of fire were heavily restricted, so I took Dreadnoughts and Terminators. Yeah. Dreadnoughts walked up and Terminators came down. Well, when Thunderfire's for line of sight really restricted. I played a game yeah, recently nice. of, I forget where it was, I forgot what game it was, but I played a game and I missed them. In a Space Marine list, having something that can fire out a line of sight. Those two things. Because people didn't bring them before because either they were too expensive, they're good. What I'm saying is being able to hit targets out of line of sight. Helps. Having a lieutenant I've, back there really helps as well. I've always brought them. I've always brought the units that the army has in the background. It's just they're, they're a bit more effective now. Do you know what else, from an opponent's point of view, what else really stuck out on more than one occasion for more than one turn? Dreadnought character. There was yes, two or three occasions yes. where I really wanted to fire at him, and he was a venerable, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones and with last reason, cannons. The only reason I gave him that thing is in the narrative, yeah. the... The venerable chap Dreadnought in the clan is the uh, the former Iron Captain. I thought he can't not be a character, right? And I wanted to give him a relic because yeah. of his character. So I did. That's where my command point farming came from. Yeah, it is actually quite um, what's the expression? Well, quite strong, I believe, is the way of uh, describing it. It was strong. I felt it. Pro- it I felt it up my end. Put it well, that well, way. You do, and if you were be if you had a beard down to your knees, if you were full Gandalfing it, yeah. You can give that to uh, multiple dreadnoughts. You can just sit them on your back line yeah. with Laz yeah, missile yeah. in your in your castle yeah. with your lieutenant. Because it happens before deployment, right? Yeah. So you could pick if you again if you're full if you go in full hardcore mode tournament wise, you can bring triple of them with mortis star with Laz kind of missile launcher. They're only 20, 120 points each, or one hundred and forty if they're venerable in the back line and the with the whirlwinds and, and moving around. Yeah. You just have to keep them behind the front rank infantry so maybe, that some people refer to as a screen. So, uh, so maybe three of them with three whirlwinds with all the buffing characters around it and then you've still got many, many points to push forward but and do your to thing. to the narrative of the, of the, the clan, of the, the army, it's a ton of vehicles and dreadnoughts and the marines. Yeah. I, you, I loved those scouts. Yeah. yeah. Because I actually haven't used those before. I know. In an yeah. Iron Hands list, zipping around, two heavy bolters in there with the Devastator Doctrine on all the time. Well, one on the vehicle and one inside. They were always hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, and it was all AP minus two all the time. And the extra shots from the rapid fire of the guys inside. Could have hopped them out and popped them on an objective if I needed to. It moves 18. If you can hop them out and, uh, yeah, objective secured. And if from, it blows up, you've got some guys... Obje- you would generally That's have, interesting. When you have scouts, you would generally have 10. So yeah. I have been thinking that I would um, get another... F- um, I was thinking, oh, well, I could put five with sniper rifles and so on. But actually, the things that are going to make them most machiney are yeah. being in a transport or on a bike. Yeah. I'm now wonder- I have thought I'll do another five on a bike or the- bikes to make the ten, but I might do another one of those. I know. That's I don't thing. think they, they, they killed, but not much. But they were consistent... Killing and tickling and tickling. But it's the speed and mobility of an objective secured unit. Mm. And let's face it, if those scouts dropped out and charged something, that's still 11 attacks on the charge with shock assault. So mopping up one or two models left that are on an objective, rapid firing in and charging in, that's effective, I thought. I didn't give the Sarge a decent close combat weapon. All my Blood Angel scout units, the Sarge's are kitted out. Yeah. Um, 
I might do that on another unit. That was interesting as well. But then again, if I had another unit, it would just be the extra five, and I'd be combat squad, and then I'm putting one in each thing, each to the one side. One wouldn't have a Sarge. See, the mark... The thing to me that tells me that a codex is good is that there is multiple ways of building it. So we've discussed there's multiple ways of building a shooty castle in the backfield. You can add a lot of speed to an iron's hand list. There's lots of stratagems that you can use for zipping around all over the place. I think it's a good book. Do I think it's turbo broken? I don't know in a world that six Eldar flyers exist and Imperial Knight armies exist. But I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be an Imperial Knight going up against an iron hand's list. With all the re-roll hit rolls and the moving oh, yeah. and the... I mean, I am not was cannon heavy. Yeah. I like to use a range. I mean, I I put together those Devastators and painted them yesterday. Right. I've had them on the go since 7th Ed. Yeah. And um, I thought, no, I'd always intended to do Grav and, and Melter, so I thought, I don't care if they're no good. But actually, they're not bad. They're not bad, because, well, Grav Cannons with Grav Amps are four shots each. First thing, I, I, I thought, actually, these are going to be a, a close-up and in-your-face unit, which is why I gave him a gun and an axe because right. they're just going forward yeah because the guns are all short range yeah i like him yeah. i like him i'll tell you what else i like because we need to wrap it up here i do like this scenery from foregroundpublishing.co.uk with these tea lights inside i think it looks very pretty um it is very this very good modular train is awesome and like i say you can put it together in whatever packet whatever mixture you want to because it's modular um board from battle map from urban maps.com um Paul from 40k God Heaven with his 29 lists and things or factions. You, I wish I had nine, let alone 29. Um, if you want no, most of them are painted, and all, all the time yes. I want to do everything. Yes. Which means every time I think about an army, I want to go and paint it. I get enthusiastic about it. <laughs> so my some of the mate, some of the guys on the Discord uh, say to me, whatever I'm working on depends on what the last book I read was. Yeah. I've seen pictures when you send photographs every now and then of boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff just just on sprues still. It's, um, you have a problem. Well, Another I, way I, don't, I don't have a problem. No, you I'm, have a problem. I'm very fortunate in the moment that I have a, a, a reasonable amount of disposable income. So the way I think of it, I'm like a, like a 40k bear. Right. Build, fattening my collection up for winter. Because <laughs> there have been times where I've been on my uppers and I've actually sold armies off and I've really not wanted to, but that's something I've done. Right. But now, I'm collecting my acorns like a squirrel planning for winter. I look at you and think more bear than winter. We're a squirrel. More bear than squirrel. That is going to get some comments, some comments that I wouldn't particularly want. Teddy bears are lovely and ugly. Well, quite. So, um, we'll draw it to a close. For more Winter's SEO battle reports, check out deploymentzone.tv, where me and Liam are there. Um, if you'd like to support me, you could visit Patreon. Look for DZTV. And uh, you can then join us in the Discord, where you get 15% off foregroundpublishing.co.uk. For everyone else who has joined us in the Deployment Zone... Double Crystals, Element Games. Element Games are a thing. We've got GameMap.eu. There's lots of vouchers on there, actually. There's quite quite a lot of stuff. And a, a, a thriving online community with dozens and dozens of different chat rooms where all sorts of people... There's pictures of, uh, of people's armies. There's tactics. There's even a Painting. Uh, competitive corner, which... Yeah. Which ITC. all the competitive guys yeah. Yeah, talk about their stuff. Yeah. There's, well, people... there's my, my favourite channel, Furry Friends, with all the cat pictures. All pictures of cats. Because the internet, cats live on the internet, More right? More cats than dogs, I have no system. Well, ca we... cats are better than dogs. Well, quite. Yeah, we both agree on that. <laughs> quite. Well, we're both <laughs> cat owners, so we, yeah. we would. Yeah. yeah so, so it's a great place. There's also live painting chat every so often as there's well. There's the which D &D. Is really good. There's the paintings. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff on there. Yeah, it's it never bored. Never bored. No. With Discord. That right? I never bored with, with Discord. Discord. Yay. I'm going to have to remember that one. Um, thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.